by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. I think we've got um, the YouTube product up. After I go say go to YouTube, I'm still figure. Tell, tell me when we can confirm that we got some YouTube. I'm pretty sure we're going, though. Uh, so what I wanted to show you before we get into this matchup, and by the way, here's the numbers real fast. The Green Re River Lady Wolves under head coach Rick Carroll, 9-8 and eight overall, 4-0, and all, though, in quadrant, in conference, ranked number 10 out of 16 teams, coming off a one-game win streak. That was two nights ago, a 52-38 win over Evanston. Okay, cool. We're on the YouTubes. Uh, offensively, defensively, no numbers jump out at you. Middle of the pack with everything. They shoot well, though, these girls when they're on. They can really hit, especially from distance. Uh, for the Jackson Lady Bronx, uh, uh, obviously coming in, still looking for that first win. 0-18 overall, 0-4 in quadrant, 35 straight losses by our count, and all the statistics, all the numbers showing them kind of bottom of the pack. Um, I want to share though this from last night and please uh, big thanks to SVI Media for allowing us to use this minute segment last night's game Lady Bronx playing the Star Valley Braves this is late in the fourth quarter late in the game Zoe Bosch the freshman who rarely comes off the floor I don't know how she plays and, and keeps playing but uh, on the video product you can see She's like, please don't show my face. <laughs> <laughs> Too late, so uh, we... And, I mean, it's, it epitomizes what the season's been for the girls, and it shows the battle, the heart in these Lady Bronx. They haven't won. They don't score hardly at all. And she's in there trying to make one free throw in a game where they're down sure. 50. Sure. Well, and to be honest, like I said, the, the one game that I have um, seen earlier this season, I, if you would have told me then that she was a freshman, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have believed you. She played well above her, her years. Yeah. And, and when you talk about, you know, not a lot of wins, you know, over the last couple of years and it, it being a rebuilding year, these girls are getting valuable minutes at the varsity level, taking their lumps. And uh, it's just a matter of time before they start to uh, put it all together and, and break the ice and get that first W. Like you said, might not come this season, but you put her as, as a sophomore next year and some of the girls around her, a great older, a great stronger. Um, it, it should be fun to watch. Oh, I mean, just I mean, my heart is with these girls all season mm -hmm. long. It's just, and I know Coach Sean Shockley feels the same way. Let's let the girls introduce themselves. Players lineup is brought to you by Young Life Jackson Hole. Hi, I'm Ashley Chamberlain, a freshman. Hi, I'm Naomi Roper, and I'm a senior. My name is Jim with Young Garcia, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Zoe Bosch, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Allison Bergshaw, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Marlo Strickland, freshman. Hi, my name is Sofia Vasquez Baez, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Lucy Webb, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Sierra Johnson, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Raina Rose, and I'm a senior. Hi, I'm Mads Holland, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Hayden Block, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Trinity Green, and I'm a freshman. Hi, I'm Kat Inky, and I'm a sophomore. Hi, I'm Holly Rowan, and I'm a freshman. Yeah, a ton of freshmen, ton of sophomores, totally. underclass kids, underclassmen. It's tough. 
Uh, we'll get keys to the game here unless uh, we might get a national anthem going. We might have to dug out for one. Yeah, let's uh, let's hit out for one more commercial break from our folks at Young Life. We'll be right back with a tap of this one and the starting lineups on Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Back court side, ready to get the player introductions. Find out who's starting tonight for Lady Wolves and Lady Bronx. Keys to the game, well, as I see them, finish. These girls got to finish what they started, and that's what's so impressive about them. Nobody's quit the team. Finish, finish strong, finish with style and grace. Bang the boards. This Green River team, the one thing they do well is they're the top rebounding team in the conference. Wow. So. You're going to have to work the paint. And then tonight, it's all about Naomi Roper. She's our only senior. So, Naomi, hi. Happy senior day yeah. to you, Naomi. As the lights dim for our player introduction for the Lady Bronx, and we would imagine we're going to get Naomi Roper in there and the starters. Oh, they, we're going to go through the managerial staff. Yeah, we're yeah. going to get everybody on this special night. Which is a super important job, nonetheless, that people think that it's just going to be the 10, 12 players. Some of the coaches, there's so much more stuff that yeah. goes on beyond, beyond the, uh, the, the and actual it's, game. Yeah, and especially with a team like this where you got to do both teaching sure. and hand-holding and cheerleading. Right? you got to keep their spirits up. Yep. You got to teach them how to play. That you got to do a lot as a coach for these five, and good yep. for them. Totally. Mads Holland, the sophomore, averaging one and a half points a game. We see her also Lucy Webb averaging one point a game. The sophomore, Zoe Bosch, who we talked about before, leading scorer on this team, three and a half a game. And who did I miss here? Uh, Johnson, is she out there? Yeah. Yeah. Sierra Johnson, the top rebounder, and she's going to tap here with Ella Stanton, 5'9", junior, for Green Rivers. We're just about ready to get this one rolling. Here we go. Green River wins the tap, and it's into the hands of Jayla Braden, the 5'7", junior. Braden hands off to Brianna Strauss. Watch her from the outside. She's got a great triple shot. They bounce it inside, pound on the paint, up and in. And that's Addison Demare with the first points of the afternoon. 2 nothing Green River. Zoe Bosch, full court pressure. Green River will do that yeah. most of the game. That's off of a Wolf player. They love to press. They'll press until they get a substantial lead, if they do. Sure. Well, that, that last uh -oh. action was a little high-low action, top from the entry from the free throw line down to the post. Giveaway, but Bra uh, Strauss missed the shot. Now another miss for Jayla Braden. you got to take advantage of the Wolves while they're not yet feeling it. Jackson ball down to nothing, just underway. 
here in Jackson, Wyoming. Zoe Bosch looking, and they had trouble with the press last time we saw this team back in January. That's stolen away. Nice steal by Ella Stanton. Hands off to Elijah Burgess, and she just pops it in easy peasy. And a timeout early, and Coach Sean Shockley calls those early timeouts usually to settle his girls down. Obviously, he's going to talk about the press. They sure. saw it last time down in Green River. They've seen it a bunch this year. It's tough to handle when you you don't handle the ball well. Right. Well, and what, I've, what I'm seeing is they're running like a 1-4 press break and having all four girls up there. As soon as they enter it, they need a quick pass to that give and go. They're putting the ball down and, and a little bit of uh, uncertainty, which is allowing that trap to really, you know, cinch them in there tight in the corner. Yeah, I mean, Jackson has just struggled with turnovers the whole year, so this is kind of just like... Yeah. Adding salt to the wound. Sure. Last time these two teams met back in and Bosch got whacked and she's the last girl I want to see get hit. Sure. But she took one on the chin, but she's all right. That'll be a foul. Green River foul. On she put Green the, River. She put the ball on the floor and went. That was kind of a key key moment there. Yeah. Instead of sitting and waiting to, for a yeah, trap. Dribble she out of trouble. Trap. Exactly. 63-10 was the final last time these two teams met down in Green River. A couple weeks ago. Before we, I can't remember. I'm going to look up the exact date sure. in a minute. Jayla Braden with it now for Green River. They're up four nothing. Brianna Strauss hands off to Burgess as they get into a bit of a weave. Now they try to work it inside. Good job denying that pass. Was that Holland? Mm -hmm. We got a hand in there. Yes. It'll be Green River ball, but a good job denying the pass to Demare, the sophomore. She's got good length. Now it's left-handed. Lay up in the lane, and Ella Stan can't get it to go, but it's because she's foul. The basket should be in the to do. And the hurt is on Sierra Johnson. Her first team first to the line is Stanton. And her first one's good. Stanton, a 46% free throw shooter. Nice high arc. Yeah, she really rainbows it up yeah. there. All these girls shoot well from the line. They're all, they must be taught. All these barely Green the River net. girls, yeah. <laughs> she barely used the net yeah, there. Fantastic. That's, they all, they've always shot well for years. We, oh, Try to give and go there, and it almost didn't mm -hmm. work, and then it worked, and it didn't. Yep, yeah, exactly. Green River with it now. Brianna Strauss hands off to Demare, and now it's back to Strauss. Her long three is short off the iron. Good rebound by Holland. And now bringing it up is Bosch. Hands off to Lucy Webb. And again, Green River trying to trap if they can, but Jackson dribbles out of it. Good job okay. on the Jackson Lady Bronx. Mm -hmm. Dribble your way out of trouble. 6-10 to go here in the opening nice. frame. Nice pass Little inside curl. the Mass Island. Yeah, she just found a soft spot in the paint. And the pass got there, but Mads could not finish. Left-handed layer in the lane, no good from Ella Stanton in the rebound, Jackson. So working the boards against the top rebounding team in the conference. Zoe Bosch almost trapped there. Now Webb gives it back to her. They're gonna run out of time. They need a timeout and a pass. Now, what was it? They're going to call the five second. The ball was in the air. That's too yeah, bad. Ten seconds. They called the ten, but I think it's once, you, once it leaves your hand, I think you can, you, yeah. the count stops. But that was close. They would have had a three on one break if they would have let the play continue. Yeah. Demare in the lane. Addison puts it up. No good. And Mads Holland with the rebound. She and Sierra Johnson are the two board bangers for the Lady Bronx. They lead the there team in go. rebounding. Good job across the line. Up ahead to Naomi Roper, the senior. Gives it back to Lucy Webb. Works top of the key now near angle to Bosch. She'll That's try a long three. That's too strong off the back of the iron. Rebound Elijah Burgess. Eliza hands off to Braden. Inside, nice, strong move to the rack by Ella Stanton. The average is nine and a half a game, and she made that look easy. Now, Jake, you can see they're committing four defenders up front. Four. If we, if we can just complete yeah. one pass, and then it's a two-on-one. We got one a two-on-one. On You're right. That ball blocked by Demare on Sierra Johnson's attempt, but Demare got some flesh in there as well. And take. She'll get... Hit for the foul. That's team second. Her first to the line is Sierra Johnson. She's got to take the lid off here. On the season, 42% free throw shooter. Yeah, we got a 
No, not quite with that one. Rihanna Rhodes will check in here for Jackson. She'll replace Naomi Roper. Strauss is out for Green River. And in is Madison Moffitt, the 5'8 junior. Second of the two for Johnson. She's short with that. Rebound, Raina Rose tried to track yep, it down, but did. Jayla Braden beat her to it. Braden across the line, Green River pushing the pace here. Stanton got Rhodes on her cross court, finds down the low post to Moffitt who hands off to Burgess. Back to Moffitt, Madison drives the lane, ran into a host of trouble there. Johnson was there, Rhodes was there. Yeah. Reina hit the deck and it's gonna be her, I think. Kind of a bailout, no. it looked like. The way she attacked into traffic, I don't know. I thought that was. Yeah, she was kind of looking for the sure, foul. I don't sure. know if she the shot it. was gonna go and right. she got it. And that'd be Johnson second. And the free throw is made here. Out comes Johnson from the game. Sierra with those two fouls is going to get an early seat. Bertram will come in to replace her. She played earlier in the JV game. I think I saw her. And both free throws made That's to make it a 10-0 game. Lucy Webb beats the press, gets it to Rhodes. Her pass intended for Holland was tipped, but it did yeah. get to Holland. And her layup is too strong. Rebound, Green River. It's Moffitt gives it to Braden. And she wanted Addison Demaray there in the corner, but her pass a little too strong. And that goes right out of the gymnasium. Jackson Ball, they're down 10, nothing, 420 to go in the opening frame. Strauss checks Strauss back in for the Wolves, replacing Madison Moffitt. She had a big game last time down at Green River against us. She looks really good. More pressure, Strauss with the steal, just took it away from Rhodes. Long three is well short from Braden and out of bounds. Oh, and they're gonna say, yeah, oh, good, Zoe good Bosch is wondering. Wait a call. minute, yeah. yeah, all right, they, they fixed got it. Some help. Yeah, she threw up an air ball. I think the ref thought yeah. it was deflected, but uh, landed out of bounds with nobody. We just, the girls need to just be a little bit stronger, throw a few ball fakes. Every pass is looking like it's getting tipped because they're telegraphing okay. a little bit. Okay, yep. And just need to attack. There's Zoe. Zoe gets it up to Lucy Webb. She drives this right side. Strauss on her. Nice inside pass to Holland. Her shot blocked. His second attempt is blocked as well. Addison Demare twice blocked the shot from Holland. The second time, though, she's going to get ringed up for the foul. And Demare didn't like it. She's no. shoulders sagging, talking to Coach <laughs> Carroll, saying, I didn't do anything. Right. I think she got her a little <laughs> bit with the hip. It, probably, it was very clean up top both times. And then with a little bit of the body. Holland, 20% free throw shooter, does miss that first one. And here's her second try. Jackson down 10 0 here in the midway through the first. Little conference here, Zebra at the scorer's table, and that's just to ice Holland a little more. But Mads has got, she's given a foot here as she's well behind the line. Maybe because she throws, she's too strong, yeah. yeah. She missed the second as well. Here comes Green River, it's Madison Moffitt, kicks it out to Stanton, tries the lane up Good and attack. in. Yeah, Eliza Stanton's been doing that all season and all last year as well. The junior played varsity ball as a sophomore last year. She's good. Get rid of it. There Zoe Bosch in trouble. Gets it to Webb. Webb going to try to dribble her way out of problems. And she drew the foul there from Jayla Braden. Yeah, I mean, Green River is just attacking uh, Jackson at what they do worse is handling the ball. Especially in the yeah, backcourt. Yeah, exactly. and it's, it's not necessarily intention. Green River presses everybody. They pressed all night last night against Star Valley. Or, uh, not them, sorry, two nights ago against Evanston. That's what they do, but yes, it sure works to anyone's advantage who presses the Lady Bronxes. They're just so timid with the ball. They got to be a little more sure with their passes, dribble out of trouble when they can. Strauss with a long three. That's good. And boy, if this team gets hitting from beyond the arc, it's trouble. They can get hot at times. Pass stolen away by Braden. Nice giving or a nice uh, little two. Yeah, two-man game. Two-man game two to Eliza Burgess. She missed the layup though and out of bounds. Webb right in front of her own bench. 
It and seems, another turnover. It seems like the couple times we have gotten it across and gotten into a set, they've gotten some good looks off of some down screen curl action, good entry pass. Uh, we just haven't knocked them down, those little eight, 10 footers. Yeah, and you've watched all season the basketball IQ really start going up. That's off the glass, no good from Braden. Rebound Jackson. Roper's going to try one on three by herself, puts it up, shot blocked, and now out of bounds. It'll go to Green River. Last yeah, touchdown. all year long. The Lady Bronx have gotten better and better at doing things, basketball things. Sure. And now we're just waiting for the finish. But they, they do get some good looks. They just can't get it to go in the hole. And they're not the only ones. The boys sure. have some shooting problems as well. We'll sure. talk about them later. Here's Jayla Braden with it now for the Wolves. To Strauss, works it inside of the paint. Nice pass, kick out to Madison Moffat. That was a, Eliza Stanton working the low post. And she dealt... We had, we had an inbounder handed out to Zoe, which acted as the inbound pass. Zoe was going to take it out of bounds, walked out, Ooh. out of bounds, back to Green River on just a blatant, just a botched handoff. Yeah. Kind of just a, a mental Green, mistake. Green River Strauss with a layup, no good, but Green River will get another try. Long three is in and out, and out of bounds, Jackson Ball. It's Madison Moffat who missed that triple. And hopefully Jackson can take advantage of a bit of a slow start shooting-wise for Green River. That Very. one won't go either. Another rebound. Ella Stanton got fouled there as she tried the Jackson board and the putback, but couldn't get it to go. She'll go to the line. Stanton, 46% free throw shooter. And as we noted, Coach Carroll's girls shoot well from the strike historically and also this year they've been pretty good that one doinked off the back of the iron no good i was surprised she shot that right hand from what i've seen in the game she's attacking with her left finishing with her left and i'm assuming she's left-handed yeah. here she is what? a right-hander that just looks yeah. very very fluid left-handed wise and as, um, as you know javit what that makes you so dangerous in the down low post when you can go sure. either hand you're really tough to cover she's got different mismatches uh, kicks on, so sure. maybe she doesn't know whether she's right or left. <laughs> yeah, one orange, one blue. Doesn't matter to her. Right hand, it doesn't matter, exactly. Lucy Webb in trouble here, gets it to there Zoe Bosch, now to Roper. That's Roper attack. across the line, but lost the handle. That'll go right to Stanton. She picks up the loose change, gives to Strauss. Strauss to a wide open. Ayla Lindsay who's in the game now. Back to Stanton, long one from Strauss, no good. Too strong, rebound Stanton. Ella Stanton works it over to Ayla Lindsay, and that's out of bounds. Jackson Ball, 144 to go. Jackson's still looking for those first points, 18 nothing in the early going. Green River with that full court press, another steal. Stanton got a hand on it to Lindsay, to Strauss. She'll try a double team. That's off the back of the backboard, out of bounds, and Jackson Ball. That's still just kind of the detriment of not using those ball fakes. Every pass has got a little bit of a deflection. You know, it seems like whether it lands in their hands or not, every pass is getting deflected. Nice power move there by Ella Stanton. Left-handed layer is good, and that's her going lefty that time, and mm -hmm. she can do that. Yeah, that's her ninth point in this game so far. Oh, wow. Yeah, she was good last time we saw this team. Down to a buck 15 to go that's in the opening frame. Take. So yeah. a bosh all by herself. She was looking for the and one, didn't get it, but she made the shot. And finally, the lid is off, 20 to two. Inside, power move there, and drawing the foul is Madison Moffitt, the 5'8 junior. That's going to be on Bosch, her first. Both teams with four team fouls here in the first half. To the line is Moffitt, 53% free throw shooter. Minute three to go as she eyes this one and gets it. Boy, they just look so yeah, smooth, very don't confident they? At the line. They have a nice stroke, all, the, mm -hmm. all these girls with their shooting. They must practice in the driveway constantly. <laughs> Bam! She hits them both and they look pretty. Very yeah, Rhodes in for Bosch. One free throw the whole day. Only missed really? one. Only missed one. Yes. Yeah. Again with that full court pressure and again it's fake. not necessarily Carroll trying to take advantage of Jackson. It's just what this team does. And another turnover. Lindsay has it. Works it up ahead to Braden. Jayla Braden. 
in trouble. Now gets it back to Lindsay. Whips it to a wide open near side. Oh, that pass Great intended. Help. Yeah, cross court intended for Burgess. Yeah, never got there. Somebody got a hand on it. Was that Johnson again? Sierra? Yeah, it was Roper. Guarding the ball right there. Roper, yeah. Inbounds pass, kick out. Lindsay around the horn. Stanton drives the lane, kick out to Braden, out to Lindsay. She'll try a three. No, nothing there, out of bounds. Jackson Ball, 33 seconds to go, 22-2. And another long afternoon on the court. Looks like shaping up here for Jackson as Lindsay stepped right into Lucy Webb in front of the Jackson bench. She'll draw the harm there. That's Green River's fifth, her first. Neither team yet in the bonus. Rhodes will inbounds. And yeah, Green River Just backs off, off a little bit there. Yeah. Lucy Webb with it now. Bounce pass to Burcham. Nice. Burcham, Cut. baseline. Naomi Roper cutting along that baseline. Yes, made herself available. Now Burcham picks up her dribble out to Rhodes. Rhodes swings it to Burcham. Good ball fake. Mm -hmm. Kick out to Roper. Roper with Lindsay on her time, winding down. He got six seconds, five. He got to get one up here. Roper to Rhodes. Bounce pass, Bertram, she'll try it. That ball partially blocked by Madison Moffat, and that's how the first quarter will end. It's all Green River here in Jackson. We'll see if we can turn things around in the second. You're enjoying Jackson Bronx basketball at KC95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Lumber, the board store, Jackson's oldest business and only true lumber yard in town. Jackson Lumber's hardware people are the best in the business, and they do it right the first time. Jackson Lumber works with people who make a living building, so the tools they sell are definitely the best hand tools and power tools available, with names like Vest Tool, Milwaukee, Makita, Skillsaw, Senko, Fine, and DeWalt. Jackson Lumber, the board store at 130 South Grovant. Call 733-6000, 733-6000. Let's get back to the live action on KZ95. Here's Jake Nichols. Back to the action as we start the second quarter here in Jackson. Lady Bronx down to the Lady Wolves, 22 to two. It's been kind of that way all season. Coach Shockley sends out his starting five again. Well, it does have Harley Rommel in there, I see. Okay, Harley to me is the spark plug. I love watching her play. Jackson ball down 20. Zoe Bosch with it. Sitting Mine. in a half court man to man right now. We'll see if they continue that full court pressure as Sierra Johnson ill advised pass. Somebody got a hand on that stolen away. Here comes Green River. Jayla Braden with it to Strauss. She'll try a long three. Good. And she's now two for three from distance. If my stats are correct, yeah. Liam can verify that. Yeah, is. she's two for three, two for three today, but she has not made a two the entire day. All right. Well, she don't even bother with that, I mm -hmm. guess. When you're Strauss, you get triples are all that matter. Lucy Webb lost the ball momentarily, gets it back. Green River, all kinds of pressing here. Pass the tenor for Bosch, and that's out of bounds. And Zoe looks like. She's already had it with the 2022-23 <laughs> season. A little dejected oh, on that turnover. One more game, Zoe, in the regular season anyway. Long three there is good, and that's Demare. Bam, and it's 28-2. Green River backs off. No more pressing, at least for now. Harley Rommel gives it to Zoe Bosch. Bosch setting the play up here at the top of the key. Fires one down low. Beautiful look. Harley Rommel. And that's Zoe Bosch. That's when the assist is as pretty as the bucket. It's great look from the good, top of the key. Good job by Zoe to find Rommel, who just got in behind everybody. Here's Strauss from the triple. She won't try it as Mads Holland's all over her and a little too all over as she's going to draw the bump. Jackson foul Holland her first. Good defense, though, by Holland. You got Strauss, who's already hit two triples, and you come out and come out and make her life miserable beyond the arc. That's what Matt Holland did, but a little bit of 
She didn't make a lot of contact. There's Braden, thought about a three, gives it back to Demare, back to Strauss. Strauss with Roper on her. Looks like 2-3 zone now for the girls. That's inside, back door, no good. Stanton, but the rebound is tipped away. Jackson Ball, here comes Zoe Bosch, loses the handle. Beautiful save, she gets it to Johnson, out to Roper. Naomi Roper, she'll drive the right block, turned away by Stanton. That's a mismatch, Stanton at 5-9. And now they'll reset 54, called Zoe Bosch out. Jeff, what's that play? <laughs> oh, and they were, I was watching them as they're in the middle of the uh, the quarter break, and you could see the coach drawing up a little bit of a oh. uh, pass to the elbow, and then a little short quarter action, almost like a little give and go. I think they were trying to execute that play. Um, looks like an offensive foul. Next one, they're gonna be in the bonus here. Green River ball, that's on. Sierra Johnson, her third already, so watch out. Strauss almost launched a three, did not. Inside, back door open now to kick out. It's Strauss again, she'll drive, picks up some trouble, and they work it out to an open player. Good look there, but the shot no good by Demaray. Good rebound by Green River to keep it going. As that was Eliza Burgess with the rebound. Smallest on the floor. Yeah. Found that, found that loose ball in the middle of the lane. Jayla Braden, cross oh, court, nice wide pass. open back door, up and in. Yeah. Eliza Burgess, the senior, she got lost in the wash. And a nice floating pass to get to her. And it's 30 to 4 with just over five to go in the half. And it looks like we'll get our one of the rare looks at Hayden Block. All right, she's ready to check in. Bosch, bounce pass to Johnson, far side. She's probably the one who's coming out with the three fouls. Beautiful bounce Great. pass to Roper, and her shot is blocked by Ello Stanton. Good idea, though. Roper yeah. with a nice cut, a nice pass to her. And Block will come in and get Roper, not Sierra Johnson. That's why I'm not the coach. <laughs> I will say, Jake, in their half-court sets, I've been very impressed at the screening, yeah. um, the cuts. They're hitting the right, you know, they're making the right reads. Now they are in that defensively in that 1-2-2 two, two box zone. They just have to have their head on a swivel so they can kind of find that. They're not matched up. They're going to find somebody loose in the corner if they don't keep their head on a swivel. They're working around the perimeter. Nothing going on down low in the paint right now as the girls doing a good job. Hands up, trying to get in the passing lane with their arms. Just nothing there. Strauss whips it over to Braden. She'll try one finally and good. And boy, Green River will get you out of that zone if they keep doing that. Yeah. But they can really shoot it when they're on and Braden knocks down the triple. Yeah, her first points of the day. She's one for four from three. She normally is good. She leads this team at scoring for 9.6 a game, so she's been quiet. And boy, that's all you need if you're yep. Jackson to have her start. As a shooter, you just want to see one go through, go through and the then, net. And then and they then, all and, go, right? Yep, then, then you're on a little heater. Mads Holland working on Stanton. Turns her around now out to block. Hayden works it a web. She bumps into Strauss. No call. They let him go. There's Mads Holland driving on Strauss. Lost the handle, but right there to pick it up is Kat Ankeny. Ankeny looking for Webb. Webb baseline three blocked by Ella Stanton. Stanton coming up with it for Green River. Bounce pass to Braden. Braden off that three. Not going to try it, though. Strauss top of the key. Far side in the corner. Now work it inside. Shot up and in. That's Eva Murray, the sophomore. And Green Size. River is just getting production from everybody. That's her first point. She's just in off the bench. And a timeout on the floor will go as well. With a score, Green River 35, Jackson 4. You're enjoying Jackson Hole Brock's basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn & Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareins.com. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. The difference in <clears throat> size, strength, yeah, comfortability. Green River's got some length to them. They're not the biggest team out there in the conference. They're also have a nice mix of 
underclassmen, upperclassmen. They play uh, maybe two, two seniors on the floor at any one time. We have yet to see Isabel Vasco. Saw a bunch of her last time down at Green River. Jackson Bird Jess is a senior. And those are the only two seniors. And they got a couple of juniors, a couple of sophomores. Just a, you know, good feeder program. And sure. they've been bringing up girls. They've been done, doing it the right way for Coach Carroll for a long time down there in Green River. Bosch with it now. 3-0. Five to go in the second quarter. Bosch to Lucy Webb on the far side. Strauss watching her. Now to Hayden Block. Hayden bounce pass into Mads at that post. She kick it out. Well, she thought about it. Good idea not to do it, though. Bosch was not open. Now Hayden Block bounce pass inside to Mads Holland. She tries to back her mark up, and good job by Mads Holland. She backed Eva Murray right up to the cylinder before she tried the shot. Couldn't get it to go, but she will draw the foul. That's Murray's first, team sixth. Holland to the line. She's, well, not great from the stripe. She's right up on it now, though, I noticed. Yeah, so totally. maybe that'll make, no, oh, then she's going to back off. She gives a foot away, but maybe that's her intention. That one is too strong, no. On that I, possession, I felt like Jackson passed the ball very well. She, they they, they were giving the ball away. Like, and that's yeah, exactly what I was That was say. good ball movement, and I love Holland, the way she played that down low post, just backing her mark mm -hmm. right up into the paint. She missed them both, though, and here comes Jayla Braden for the Wolves. 2.40 to go in the half. Braden works it over to... McKinley Kilpack, the freshman, first look at her. Her shot no good. Rebound Jackson. Holland gives to Webb, who gives to Bosch. Bosch across the line. Green River backing off that full court press, thankfully. Webb with it now. Nice give and go to Bosch, but she's turned good. around by Brady. She's going to try right. it anyway. Oh, my. Great. Zoe Hit Bosch. Jayla Braden was all over, and Boss says, oh, somebody's got to try one here, and she did. Big shot. That's McKinley Kilpack with it now, the freshman, top of the key to Stanton. Stanton works it inside. Pass almost got away from Murray, but she recovers. Strauss with it now. Kick out. Braden, wide open three is good. Oh, boy, Shooter. that was some ball movement there. Five for two now. Or two for five. There. 38 to 6, Green River with 145 to go. Zoe Bosch with it. She's on the floor almost all the time as she feeds to Ankeny. Ankeny inside to Mads Holland. She'll try a shot. That's partially blocked. Stanton has got a ton of blocks already. We don't keep that stat unless Liam can get it together. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's got to be her fourth block yeah. in this half. Here's Braden again. Bam. Holy cow. Jayla Braden. Three in a row. Yeah, we talked. Talked about her being the team's leading scorer. She was quiet for a bit, but not now. There's her nine that she averages this year Yee. on the last three shots. Yeah, 50% from three today. Man, just over one. Zoe Bosch barks out the play and works it to Mads Hollins on the near elbow to Webb. Webb on the baseline, left hand pass to Ankeny. Had block cutting, but just couldn't get it to her. Now top of the key, Zoe resets. Under a minute, Zoe Bosch with Braden on her. Far side, Ankeny, Cat to Hayden Block. Hayden looks around and just feeds back to Bosch, and they'll try to redo this here. Just can't find anybody cutting or getting open. There's a baseline cut by Webb. Ball gets nice. to her up and in, but she, is it gonna be a travel? She did slide she on the hit. floor. Yeah, she okay. got hit. They're gonna she call it on foul. the floor, but uh, one and one, uh, instead of just kind of letting that play go for an and Seven. one, yeah. they called it on the floor. And I like the movement. It got stale for a while. They were down in this yeah. court in the offensive zone for a long time with nothing happening. Finally, Lucy Webb said, I'm gonna make myself available. Good baseline cut and draws the foul at the line. Webb, a 30% free throw shooter. Can't get it. Eva Murray with a rebound. 41 to 6 Green River with 22 seconds wide open underneath is McKinley Kilpack. She misses a she shot. Can't she believe can't it. believe she yeah, hands on That's head. That's all right, girl. You got three more years to make those. You can work on that in the offseason. She's just a freshman. And she goes to the line, a 50% free throw shooter. She's good with that one. Yeah. It's been very impressive to see the age level uh, 
Jackson's feet up from freshman yeah, to sophomore in, in the couple games that I've seen, both both for Jackson and for for Riverton. And Sometimes River. you can't tell, right? Sure. Is that a freshman or a yeah, senior? 100%. Like, man, it's pretty exciting for those you know families that that are having a freshman on playing varsity. Playing in varsity. varsity. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of big games ahead of her. Zoe Bosch was looking inside of that pass, but Jayla Braden got a hand on it with a steal. Green River will play for a last shot here inside to Murray. Turn around. That was a nice power move mm -hmm. in the paint. She couldn't get it to go, but a foul here on the rebound. Scramble. Jackson foul on Ankeny. That'll be Jackson's eighth foul. and the second on Ankeny. And with 2.3 seconds to the line will be McKinley Kilpack, that freshman. That's off the back of the iron, no good. 42 to six, been all Green River all the time as Kilpack tries a second and she gets that. Another, Not much time here. Another nice stroke from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, they shooters. make them and they look pretty doing Very, it. Pretty Lucy much. Webb got a launch one and she does. And it goes right to the concession stand. And that'll do it for the half. So after one half of play, it's Green River 43. Jackson 6 will be right back with the halftime show and hopefully talk to uh, head coach for the boys, Hayden Hatfield, after these. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh... He, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes the dynamite. And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom, goes the dynamite. Oh, he's going to get more than one shot. Oh. Shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Back here at the half, where it has been all Green River. My goodness. We'll get the stats in a minute. Somebody uh, get a headset on Coach Hatfield. We'll talk to him real quick. Coach, I think I got you. Hey, you, you hear me? This? Yeah, bam. All gotcha. right. Gotcha. Nice. Sounding good. Uh, so, I mean, I'm taking a quick scan out there, and I, the number one thing, all that matters in the world right now is number 21 going to play. I see him out there shooting. What's going on? Didn't see him in Star Valley. That surprised the SVI crew. They were wondering where our big man was. Yeah. He, What's uh, happening? He was, uh, he was under the weather. So uh, yeah. we're going to play it by ear today. Uh, he's still to be decided. Um, we're going to see how he warm, warms up up here um hope to have him yeah you know and i might have been the jinx on that because i actually said at some point i think it might have been down uh it might have been at kelly walsh i thought you know this team sometimes tries too hard to feed hannah the ball and i said w wouldn't it be something if hatfield just sat him for a, a two-minute stretch and you got used to someone else being the dude and look what i did way to go jake yeah i know uh, well I know. no but uh, in all seriousness the guys played really well last night um, yeah. Yep. You know, we didn't have, we played five out, went up, you know, we found out about two hours for the game, no Andrew. Um, so we adjusted, went five out offense. Uh, shooters got their opportunities last night. So uh, maybe it gave some guys some confidence. We'll see maybe if we can put two and two together today, make four. Yeah. I mean, you, to switch it up that fast, there were times I watched that game where there was nobody down low in the paint. All five of your guys were outside beyond the arc and here's the thing uh you know you you gotta shoot it this team has not shot well really all season and the one time they did was against this green river wolf team down there and if you know when hannah's not out there even if he is it, it, this team has to shoot better what's going on yeah uh jake you know if if you figure that out let me know uh, <laughs> yeah. i mean you, you know we practice 
half our practice now is getting shots up, reps up. Um, I think it's a mental thing with our team right now. Um, yeah. We've got the guys to do it. Uh, it's just got to click. And I, I really do think game reps last night really will help our guys. AJ's of the world, Mac. Uh, yeah. Carson's come on lately. Um, and a, you know, a, a thankless task for Gavin Keelan. He got in foul trouble early. Yeah. He's, he was asked to really defend two bigs, yeah. Taft McClure and Croy Jenkins. That's tough without him. And it was not his, Keelan's night. I mean, he's just whistling. He didn't see much floor time. Uh, but anyway, getting back to that shooter, we saw a lot of Willis with a right. Yep. He, he made great strides. But what is the aim now with two games left in the regular season? Uh, I, you know, obviously this team's not peaking hitting the postseason, but you got two games to get there yep. um, and try to hit your stride as you get into uh, playoff play. I yeah. mean, no, I think that we're getting there. Um, I think we, we hit a high you know about 10 games ago where we're I think we're 10 and 3 or something um, you know going forward our, our things are can we knock down shots can we rebound the ball that's been our two focuses the last couple weeks if we ha if we get those two things going man uh, it'll be tough to get us but like you said peak at the right time we got two opportunities here um, you know they're good teams we have to play well to beat both of them so yeah. um, you know big implications seed wise so we're you know we're excited to have an opportunity but you know peak here we got to show that we can rebound against teams like this show that we can score the ball um, like I said like, and I think you said too if we can get Andrew going with our shooters it's gonna be hard to beat us eventually so. right right and and, and hopefully, I mean, when you're hot early, that basket gets bigger and everybody's hot. It just feeds. When you're not hot, boy, that cylinder seems smaller and you almost want to check it and make sure it's regulation size. Totally. Oh. Well, well, we got the guys to do it. It's just going to yeah. take a little bit. Get them all on the same page. Um, guys, like senior night tonight. We got seniors up. Opportunity started off. Matt, Carson, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, one last question about this Green River team. Now, yeah. you guys got to turn around a five. Five game skid. You got to do it against a team you beat down in Green River, but um, you know for for the Wolves, Coach Lori Ivy, she's been there a while. She always has her kids ready to play. Yeah. They can all shoot uh, usually and shoot from outside, but their big guy is Tara and Archibald. You don't stop them. You just limit the damage, yep. and you kind of did that last time we down did. there with Andrew on them. What's the game plan tonight? Yeah, no, we're gonna man up again. Uh, okay. You know we're not gonna. We've been zoning a lot lately, but can't do it against this roster. So. Um, um, to start, we'll have someone. We'll have Drew Griebel on him to start. Uh, Drew, ah. Drew, so senior nights. We'll Go get him, Drew. Drew's, Drew's job tonight. So, um, like you said, Lori always has him ready to play. She's always got two or three things up her sleeve. So we'll see. Uh, I expect them to zone us. So like we did last time, shooters in the corners, big guy in the middle. See what happens. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate Thanks, your time. Yeah. Thanks, thanks guys. For thanks, Coach. Coach Hatfield, thanks for joining us here at halftime. Liam, let's uh, take a look at these stats for the girls. What do you see jumping out you? The Green River Wolves team um, saw a whole bunch of Stanton, didn't we? Uh, who else? Well, yeah, uh, Stanton and Braden have, each have nine points, but they've spread the ball Yikes. very well, which is something that even the boys of RC struggles with. Uh, they off, they've been shooting very well, 46 from three, 40 from two, wow. and overall with 43. They have not actually out-rebounded the Bronx, as the Bronx have 11 rebounds, and I counted uh, mm. Green River to have seven. But they have been shooting very well from the free throw line, nine for 12. Yeah, they're, they've always been good at that. This is, as we said, the top rebounding team of the conference. Out of all 16 teams, they're number one, but 35 and a half boards. So good job, Sierra Johnson, Mads Holland, and everybody else uh, for banging the glass. And then, uh, what what do we got? There's Zoe Bosch. She's been a gamer. What is she, she made a couple. Yeah, she's got four, and Harley Rommel has won. So all the freshmen have been scoring today. Yeah, it's like it's been that way all season. It's been the freshmen's game. Well, the good news is we got three years for them to grow up and grow into their roles on this Lady Bronx team if they stick with it. Yeah. 
Jake, I'm, actually, I'm anxious to see what kind of uh, adjustments, if you want to call them that, that they're going to try to implement, you know, coming out of halftime. I think those last couple possessions um, that the Bronx had were, were very patient. Made, Liam alluded to it, a lot of good passing. They're running their, their flex offense, their motion offense. You know, we're just kind of um, trying to get those cutters coming from the weak side and be very patient in doing so. They're completing a lot of passes, and I know it's not the NFL, um, where you're getting points for that but you know the fact that they're not turning the ball over and they're getting some good looks it's just a matter of some up fakes inside you, you talked about all the blocks that were going on the girls are not having to do a whole lot to block these shots they're not leaving yeah. their feet just with a hand up if they can get a little head fake a little up fake and and kind of get them off balance they're going to have a little bit better opportunity to knock down some of these little shots in the key well, this game is kind of following the pattern of all season where to start the game, the girls f first you come out and your intention is to win, you sure. know, to be competitive, sure. try to win the game. Sure. Then you start seeing things like a full court press. You, all of a sudden you're down 10, nothing. Coach Sean Shockley calls his first time out and then you get down, you, you know, you almost see the girls ease, settle into a little something and say, OK, maybe we're not going to win this one, but let's start working on the stuff we've been doing in practice. Totally. Here are the play. Here's our half court set here are the plays here's what they're doing that's what, all of a sudden it looks like they settle down into plays and you start seeing them get better looks and doing some better things basketball wise even though the score is yeah, really you, all season never reflected sure. it. if you can eliminate that scoreboard up there and just play basketball i think these girls are yeah. kind of hanging you know holding their own here after that initial first quarter and uh it's just a matter of of trying to get better at all the little things that you've been working on against a live defense that's you know that's totally outplaying them at this point but we'll see how it goes the second half here we go switching sides green river still in their road green trimmed in white that shot blocked demaray failed to make it and now it's jayla braden works it inside demaray will try again that one will go addison demaray the sophomore averaging nearly seven a game puts that through and green river has their first points of the second half zoe bosch will bring it up switching sides though and it's jackson now moving right to left in their home whites trimmed in orange and black zoe bosch launches one looking for roper but too high needed to be six foot two and naomi's probably five two yep yep that wasn't a that wasn't a great angle to try to enter that pass to the cutter but Braden to Strauss. Strauss gets a screen from Stanton and now bounce pass to nobody. And I'm going to say Green River ball off, of Green off a hand. Boy, I thought it was. It looked like a deflection, a, but looked like a bounce pass we to don't no have one. The greatest angle. Nice floater in the Demaray. She tries a yeah. hook in the lane there. No good. She's short with it, but that's because she got whacked on the arm and it's going to be holland her second team first here in the second half and demare to the line the sophomore a 75 percent free throw shooter that leads the team that already shoots it pretty good and statistically that shouldn't have happened <laughs> she missed it yeah nine of 12 in the first half as liam said here's 0 for yeah. one to start the second yeah those points add up demare yep. gets a shooter's roll there and we got a 46-6 game. Yeah, Allison Demarain now is eight on the game. She was pretty good. I mean, that's a sophomore. I like the yeah. mix of they have. To, they have a freshman, sophomore, junior, and seniors in a good mix, and they get production from everyone. As Liam noted at the halftime stat show, they production from all the girls and the bench players. That pass... Never got where it was going. Addison Demaray steals it. She'll try a long three here, and she hits that. Boy, she's inside down low, outside, charity stripe. Demaray wants it all and gets the triple there to make it 49-6. So yeah. Bosch. There's, there's something about shooting a free throw, seeing it go through, and then the next possession, <laughs> you're, ready, you a, to, you're yeah. ready to hoist up a 20-footer, and that's exactly what she did. Good point. Yeah, that free throw gives you a feel for see, a 15-foot stroke. See and then the ball go through the net for sure. Uh -huh. Zoe floats one into Sierra Johnson, playing with three fouls, hands it back to Bosch. She nice drives left. the left block, can't get it to go, gets her own rebound. Ah. That one, no. And now the rebound, and Bosch rips yeah. it away from Demaray. 
And I got news for you, Addison Demare. Zoe Bosch <laughs> has had it. <laughs> Great effort down low. Yeah. Half she, the size, came up with three offensive rebounds and a putback finally just, just off the edge of the rim. But through two free throws. Earns her a trip here to the line where she's good with a first. And needless to say, Zoe leading all Lady Bronx scores. She's done that on a nightly basis, averaging 3.6. She's better than that already today. Her second is too short. Big scramble for the rebound, but it goes into the hands of Ella Stanton. Ella bounce pass, looking inside for Burgess. It didn't get there. And scoots out of bounds off the Lady Bronx. Braden. Great, great hustle by Roper on the weak side to break that pass. She's a hustler. I've noticed layup. that all season. She gives a lot, and she does hustle the ball. She never gives up on a ball. If there's a loose ball, I guarantee you Roper is running it down. You cannot teach that, and that's what coaches just love when there's an effort player out there. Demare, strong move on the baseline in the left block. She can't get that shot to go, and it's out of bounds. Jackson ball, Boshelin's bounds, 435 left here. We got a running clock already. 40 points. Oh, okay. Yep, 49-7. Bosch brings it over the line. Jayla Braden picks her up. Bosch going to drive right by her. Just blew by her and couldn't get the layup to go. I think she was surprised there was no resistance. Yeah. And Bosch hit the glass too hard. There's a long three from Burgess. No good. Rebound, Stanton. Great rebound. Or, sorry, uh, rebound. Johnson. Johnson, Sierra Johnson. I don't know why I want to yeah, call her that's Stanton. Her, that's her sixth rebound on the day. Yeah, she's girl pulling sets. down the loose balls. She averages. Nice. Get in there. Almost there five a game. That one up and in. Who was that? Roper. Roper. Oh, no. Right. The senior heard from. 40-point game. Braden whips it over to Burgess, but holds the ball over her head, drives the paint, turns away. Braden, nice float pass in the lane, up and no good by Moffitt, but a nice rebound on the back side. Rebound. Ella Stanton, that long three from Braden won't go, and Mads Holland has it for Jackson. Mads bumping it. all the way down with Moffitt. No nice call. Pass. Nice bounce pass to Zoe, and Bosch could not finish. Beautiful little backhand bounce pass to find Zoe Bosch cutting right down the lane. And Zoe could not quite finish. It's one of those grab your rebound Good. and go. And uh, she did that up the lane, up the side, found a nice cutter by Zoe. She just couldn't knock down that little floater in the lane. Raina Rhodes comes in for Lucy Webb for Jackson. Just under three. Jackson down 40. Braden works it to Moffitt inside. Kilpack who kicks it back out. Top of the key. It's Demare, far side. Kilpeck. Now in down low post. Shot blocked by Moffat. And is she going to draw the yeah. foul? Yes. Zoe got caught on her back and just couldn't get around. And when they when they have those bigger posts going block to block and you get caught on their back, they're making great entry passes. And then it's up to the post to just kind of turn and yeah. flip up a little hook shot. That's a tough matchup for tough. Bosch. Moffat, a 5'8 junior, is really one of their down low forwards. I don't know how mm -hmm. Bosch got on her but it doesn't look Jake like she they have a one true, of the two like they have a true center it's a lot of wings couple yeah. guards and then just and then just four or five He's, just forwards yeah. that just I'm you seeing know. a lot of that across high school sure. they're just Pass there, Mads Holland looking for Rena Rhodes to just too high. Rhodes was cutting towards her, yeah. and Holland just floated it too high. You could see Mads tap her chest and say, my bad. She just kind of airmailed that one a little bit. Holland promised she's going to work on her passing, right? <laughs> 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 Great little All apologies. So, yeah, nice drive there by Stan, but she couldn't get the easy layup to go, and Jackson will come back with it. Zoe Bosch, she's going to wait for numbers now. Settles it down, top of the key. Braden has been on her all game. Here to the near elbow. Nice bounce pass. Johnson into Roper. Roper gets turned away by McKinley Kilpack. And Jackson will reset. Far side, Rhodes. Nice. Rhodes back to Holland. A little give and go. Mads yeah. puts it up. No good, but draws the foul. Great action. That's going to be on Kilpack, I believe. He's going in, girl. Yeah. 104 to go, and that's sorry, that's going to be on Demare, her third. 
Yes. And as soon as Matt sent that pass across, she just made a ball side cut right down the lane and a great play by Rhodes to find her and a great catch by Mads at the same time. Alt made a great looking give and go there yep. across the lane. Out comes senior Roper and in is Lucy Webb. Holland missed the first, her second. That won't go either. She hasn't made she's one right yet there. from no, there. She's but right there. Jackson rebound, but now thrown away. Kilpack can't track it down, though. Out of bounds, Jackson ball. Zoe Boschel inbounds right down here at the bottom of your screen at the scorer's table. 20 seconds and counting here in the third. Jackson down 50 to 9. Bosch. Looking around, has Kilpack on her now. As Green River switched up the defense. Lucy Webb back out to Holland. She wanted an inside pass to Johnson, never got there. Somebody got a hand at it. I think Stanton. She's got it now. Ella Stanton finds a wide open Braden, kicks out. That's a long three from Demar right at the buzzer to make it 53 to 9. Green River just pouring it on here, and Jackson will be back for the final eight minutes of this one. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Jackson Hole High School Bronx basketball is brought to you in part by the Elk Country Inn. Coming May of 2020, the Elk Country will offer new rooms and amenities. The new expansion will bring a brand new indoor-outdoor swimming pool, indoor and outdoor spas, a new dining area with complimentary breakfast, conference facilities, and so much more. Located on Pearl Street, you'll be able to leave the car and walk to Jackson's greatest shopping, dining, entertainment, bars, and breweries. Live like a local at the new Elk Country Inn, coming this May. This is KZ95 with live coverage of the Jackson Bronx. Back to the action, Coach Sean Shockley is breaking the huddle on the near side here and see if these Lady Bronx can play hard for another eight minutes. It's been a long, long season for these girls. Green River, pretty good basketball team when they're shooting well. Uh-oh. Yeah, with the uh, with the running clock to start, I didn't realize the 40-point mercy clock was in effect, but it is, we're rolling. Liam, our statistician, has broke the computer somehow. I didn't break it, it broke <laughs> <laughs> It'll come out of your pay. Don't worry, kid. No. Strong in the lane, Sierra Johnson with a nice shot, but it can't get it to go. She played hard in the paint with some pretty big girls with length. That's a sophomore, Edison Demare, who partially blocked that. Green River ball. They're up big. Here's a long three, just short, launched by... Sydney Eastman seeing her first action. Her parents are right over here to the right of us, or they were. Eastman played a little bit on the JV team. Yeah, I saw her at the break. They just rushed her into the scores table to get her in. Oh, is that right? Yeah, just I right asked on, if off we, the bench shooting. We, we saw her a little bit down in Green River. Well, She'll play a little bit for the varsity. Just like you said, Jake, as far as the uh, the age of some of these girls, it's great. There we go. Good shot there. That was Sierra Johnson. Was that a three? It looked like it. Yeah. I think the foot was on the line. Long two. Yep. Good job by Johnson to knock down her first points. And here is that Eastman. Works it near side to Ella Stanton. Stanton on the elbow. Johnson watching her. Top of the key. McKinley kill back to freshman. Now inside. Nice move by Eva Murray. She's doing basketball things that sophomore. She just can't get her shots to go. Missed it. Six and a half to play in the fourth. Zoe Bosch kicks nice out. Finds. Wide open. Burcham. Oh, Allison Burcham. And... That's two consecutive trips down the floor. Their work result in points. Inside pass to Kilpack. Kicks it back out. Long three from Eastman. No good. And the rebound, Jackson. Zoe Bosch with it now. Yeah, Zoe's doing a great job just finding the open person. And it's 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 amazing when, when you find somebody open and they just, just yeah. no, no hesitation put the shot up. Bosch is a good ball distributor. Sees the floor well. And again, just a freshman. Lucy Webb in trouble here. Finds Bosch. And she couldn't get that shot off right there to partially block it was Addison Demare. That's 
Good job by Zoe to make herself available to Webb, who is in all kinds of trouble. And nice job by Webb to throw a little back get that pass. Back yeah. pass that was complete. That, see, and that, everything worked except the finish. Yep. And that's been the Jackson's thing like, all season. They'll do some things that really impress you. Is that shot no good by McKinley Kilpack, but she got whacked and she'll go to the line. It's going to be Allison Burcham, her first team third, 5 Oh, 5 and running. Joke's on you, Jake. I fixed the stats. Did you? Well, you're under 30, so you know how to work machine on these computers. I wouldn't have been able to do it. Way to go, Liam. Jake would have called nerd squad. Yeah, I would have said, find me a teenager. Liam just, boom. Well, while you're in there, like, do some, like. Download some apps for me. Yeah, get my stuff working better. Nice job by Bertram to pull down a free ball that was up 50-50 ball. She found it on the rebound. Jackson ball, Zoe Bosch with Sydney Eastman on her. Eastman, the freshman, just played a JV game out there on the floor for the varsity. Lucy Webb walks it to the top of the circle. Far side of Bosch on that elbow. Zoe in front of the black hole, whips it out. Good weaving. There's an open look for Rihanna Rhodes. Her shot short. just short. Demare with a rebound for Green River. Wolves up 53-13. There's Eastman with a long three top of the key. No good. Out of bounds. She knows her job. She's in there to shoot the ball. And, yeah. And well, she, that was she was wide open. Yeah. I mean, that was the she shot. Some good looks. Uh, yep. Time out here is Coach Carroll wants to take a moment to be able to coach up the girls. Uh, he's got a lot of his bench players in there. A lot of the future varsity teams. So it's a good time to do some teaching. Teachable moment. 3:52 to go. 53-13. It's been all Green River, kind of like it was down there in Green River. I'm just kind of taking a peek. You can kind of see Coach drawing up his next offensive set and is similar to some of their flex action that they're trying to get. Uh, he just looks like he's trying to free up a guard from the weak side to come over uh, and run a little high-low, almost like a little triangle set, maybe try to get a post some action, try to get the ball down to Maddie, get her off the block. What you said, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Well, was, I'm, was only 30, I'm, only, I'm only 30 <laughs> feet away, but I can see the dry erase pen, and it's, I can see it wiggling. It's like let's you're in the they, huddle, let's man. Let's see if they can execute coming All right. out here. Let's see if they can. Boschel inbounds says Green River's backed off that early heat they were showing. Full court press for the first quarter, but Bosch with there it now. Go, the weak side coming through. Bosch to Holland. Holland weak cross court to that weak side. Nice. Bosch makes a strong move to the rack, but can't get the shot to go. Good execution. Demare out rebounds. Sierra Johnson just boxed her out, pulled down that board. Here's Eastman running the floor now for Green River as a freshman gaining valuable experience. Inside, up, and the shot no good as we're seeing a lot of JV. I don't know. That's Macy Hernandez. Jackson Ball. She had a good look. Kelly in there for Green River as they are emptying the bench. Three minutes to go, and Roper checks in for Lucy Webb, the senior, playing her final game on this home court. Zoe Bosch. Up across the line, Eastman meets her at midcourt. Zoe, left-hand dribble, picks up her dribble and works it to Raina Rhodes. Rhode. Oh, no, that was a, a whistle physical. away from the ball there is some bumping going on between 30, do I have a 35? Don't have a 35. Deep on the roster. Deep. Well, when you're up 40. Yep. Oh, that's great Nice inbounds play. pass to Holla, and her shot won't go. That's the good news. She'll go to the line. That's also the bad news. Mads needs to make one. Let's get one, here. Mads. 
It's Come great, on, Mets. Great little inbounds play. They've been yeah. throwing, throwing this lob Set over the play. top. Yeah. And she kind of deked her and then cut right back and it was just kind of a little, little fake out. Yeah. Um, but got the ball at the rim and just got hit on the arm as she was going up. I like it a lot. Wholesale changes for Coach Shockley as we get a look at Rommel. Birdsham in there as well. Ankeny. And Hayden Block. Mads Holland's second is off the mark. Rebound Roper, and she gets she hit, I thought. Rim didn't catch the rim. Oh, okay. Lane violation there um, when you don't catch iron. Got it. Green River ball. Eastman will bring it up. Down to 120 to go in a running clock. Works it far side to another. Uh, that's Kelly. Kelly with it now. Isabel Kelly. Hands off to Eastman. Sydney Eastman takes a walk. A little bit of a stroll near side to the mysterious three. I don't have a three either. One minute to go. Jackson ball. Naomi Roper behind the back dribble. Looking for some open room here. Swiping at it is Eastman. Got a piece of it, but Naomi recovers. Works it to Harley Rommel. Rommel, Marcy Hernandez on her. I'd like to see Roper get the ball back and get a final look. Yeah, Bertram final, tries final the right block, double team, kicks it out. Rommel, she'll try a long three. Go, Harley Rommel. Good Up shot. and in. Nice. Down to 30 seconds. That's Harley's second bucket tonight, right, Leon? I think she yeah. hit one earlier, yeah. Yeah, she's 100%. She made it two Ooh. and now she's made it three. Sydney Eastman off the back of the iron, no good. Rebound goes to Burcham. Jackson down to 15 seconds. Burcham and the reach in on Eastman. That'll be her second, I think. Should be a stop clock. It's under 40. Ah, oh, good point. Yes, and we want to see, yeah, well, we want the ball. looks like we'll end the game. On clock still rolling. Roper will inbounds and yeah, but just let it go at that. So yeah. this one a final. The score: Green River 53, Jackson 16. We'll be back to wrap things up and reset for the boys when we come back. You're enjoying Brox basketball on KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Hey, I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. All right, back to wrap things up here courtside. Don't forget... Young Life, Jackson Hole, Young Life, accepting teens for who they are, no strings attached. One of those teens is with us, Liam. He's the president of the Nerd Squad. Hey. What's it look Geek like? Geek Squad. He's, Geek Squad is what I meant. Hey, hey, he's doing the stats. Yeah. I, can't, I can't do it. No, he's I'd never be able to do that. What do we got? Let's start with Green River. What'd they do? how those girls look? They really spread it around pretty well. Well, in the first half, it was mainly just the Jayla Brady show. She yeah. was making all the three towards the end of it. She but then in the hot. second half, Addison DeMar, or however you say it, started yep. pulling away. She just started making three after three, made some twos, made it from the free throw line. She ended up with 14 points on the day. Wow. Okay. Uh, also, they spread the ball out uh, evenly like they did in the first half. I can count like three, five. That's like eight people had scoring. Yeah, ba balanced yeah. scoring it looks like. Really balanced. Impressive. Yeah, from shooting wise, they were 44% from three, 34% from two, and overall they were 39%. 44 from three, that is a great That's number outstanding. all the way up to, you know, yeah. the NBA. I mean, what, what, what were the numbers, Liam? How many did they make on how many shots? Uh... Oh, uh, there it is. the totals. I thought they didn't give it to me, but it's they uh, shot for 26, made nine, and from from three they shot for 18 and made eight. Eight for 18. That's 
that's going to win you some ball games. Yeah, and you know that they, they can do that. We said when they're shooting, they're getting so are their boys. Okay, uh, for the girls' side, I see Zoe Little scores along with Rommel. Both had five apiece. What else happened over there? Well, also on there, surprisingly, despite Green River being the number one rebounding team, Jackson actually beat them, and Sierra Johnson All matched right. Green River in rebounds with 11. Yes, All Sierra. Right. Way to do it. Yeah, and then the rest I of the like team that. had also 11. So very good rebounding night for Sierra, but, you know, they weren't exactly special from the free throw line. One for 13. Yeah. Yeah, it gave away some points there. Five apiece for Rommel and Bosch. Two apiece for Sierra Johnson, Allison Burcham, and Naomi Roper. We promised we would show this senior night stuff, so let's let us shut up a moment. We will pick a most valuable player from both girls' squads in just a minute, but I want to watch this. Enjoy this at home, the uh, senior night here in Jackson. This award is given each year to any Lady Bronx player, freshman through senior, who best embodies five characteristics that describe Sydney's characteristics on the basketball court. Sydney's jersey number five is also Sydney's jersey number. The five adjectives are spunky, aggressive, quick, headstrong, and passionate. The team then voted on one player that best embodied these characteristics during this year's basketball season. Past recipients of the SLJ Award are myself, Nikki Johnson, Kat Bush, Shaylai Funk, Aspen Johnson, Colin Gaston, Reagan Ross, Haley Hardman, Brooklyn Hills, and Bailey Chamberlain. Before I announce this year's recipient, the Judge family and I would like to thank everybody who has continued to make this award possible and remind you all to please drive mindfully and carefully. I have had the pleasure of coaching this year's recipient a little last year and multiple times over the years in youth basketball. She has always reminded me of Sydney. She embodies all five of those adjectives to a T. And on top of it, she is always dressed to impress. As Sydney would say, look good, play good, duh. Congratulations to this year's well-deserved recipient of the SLJ Award and a $500 scholarship from the Sydney Lee Judge Scholarship Foundation. Congratulations to this year's winner, Lucy Webb. Good job, Lucy. There isn't a wrong choice there, but I, I, I'll go with that. Lucy Webb, fantastic. Good for Lucy. Hey, who'd you guys like on the Lady Bronx for that game for your uh, favorite, most valuable player? Uh, I'll, I'll start. And this might be controversial, but if we're kicking this off, Jackson did not score well, so I'm I'm not going to give it to either of the high school scores. I'm going to give it to Sierra Johnson because they did out-rebound the number one rebounding team. So I think that if we're going to give it to him. We're thinking alike, Liam. I agree. 100% same. That's a great call, Liam, to not just kind of look at the stats sheet and pick somebody by total points. Yeah, she was involved in a ton of plays down low at both ends of the floor and just did all the dirty work today. Sierra Johnson was a gamer today. Gets our MVP. Let's give, take it back courtside for more senior night stuff. for the girls team with three letters. Front of house associate at the Center for the Arts. She would like to thank her parents for the travel weekends, her siblings, the three Bs, and her friends. Thank you for all the support. Amelia Davenport. <laughs> Next up, Naomi Roper. Her parents are Rebecca and Tom, Rebecca Thomas and Arm Kapeda. She is escorted by her parents, along with younger brother, Jacob and Andrew, and younger sister, Edie. She plans on attending the University of Wyoming on a Fulbright scholarship. She hopes to study biomedical engineering or chemical engineering. Her accomplishments include a 4.0 GPA, two years on the basketball team, one year of soccer, and being nominated for the U.S. Presidential Scholars Award. She would like to thank her parents for always supporting her and pushing her to be the best person she can. 
She would like to thank her coaches for all their hard work in making the season memorable. Naomi Roberg. Wow, she's smarter than all of us. <laughs> Way to go, <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> there comes some of the boys, seniors now. And studying something in environmental science. His accomplishments, including a varsity letter, and he would like to thank his parents, his sister Dylan, and all his friends and coaches and teammates. And lastly, Sarah. Willis Witherite. That's Willis Witherite, not Connor Scott, as he was called last night by the SBI guys. Willis transferred in from Teton to begin this season. He's been really good off the bench. He's escorted by his parents tonight. He plans on attending Oregon State University or Arizona State University to study sports management or athletic training. His accomplishments include a 3.8 GPA, two years varsity basketball, NHS, honor roll, and a community volunteer. He would like to thank his parents for always being there to support him, his coaches and teammates for a great season so far, and to his boys who have always been at his own game. Carson Harlan. All right, Carson, we're going to need some threes out of you. His yeah. dad and his uncle both a part of Harlan Real Estate. We need you, Carson. We need the threes. Mac Fairbairn being introduced now. He wants to, he has been an electrician, electrician apprentice here in Jackson and is considering Flathead Valley Community College or Northern Wyoming Community College to study to be an electrician and basketball coach. His accomplishments include a 3.6 GPA, Rotary Student of the Season, and two years varsity basketball. He would like to thank his wonderful parents, family, friends, Naomi Roper, Dave Farron, Dean Woodmancy, Sean Shockley, Hayden Hatfield, Matt Elliott, Jay Silver, Pete Hoffman, and Todd Hanna. Matt Fairbairn. Atta boy, Mac. He's another guy who can get streaky hot from the triple. Had yeah. a great game last night against Star Valley. Seeing a lot of a lot of blue warm-up shirts, a lot of boys, a lot of seniors on this team. Yeah, seniors. Brothers, Aaron, Jesse, and Adam, along with his grandparents. He plans on attending either the University of Oregon, Washington State University, BYU, or Michigan State. He would like to study filmmaking, business marketing, and entrepreneurship. His accomplishments include a 3.9 GPA, nine-time Cheyenne Youth Short Film Festival Award winner, three years varsity starting basketball, Rotary Interact club president and state DECA champion. He would like to thank every coach he's ever had, his grandparents and mom and dad for believing in him, his brothers for pushing him, and his community for helping him to become who he is. Isaac Larson. Well, we're sad to see Isaac graduate. We'll still have Larson's for a while. Aaron and Jesse, both coming up from the JV program. He's planning on going to the University of Nebraska to study to become a physical therapist. His accomplishments include a 3.6 GPA, 33 on the ACT, two years varsity football, and one year varsity basketball. He would like to thank his parents, brother, sister, bookshelf, all of the coaches he has had, Shockley, Jackie Hart, and Dean for teaching him to love basketball. Drew Griebel. Drew Griebel is going to draw the unenviable assignment of trying to contain Archibald tonight. So good luck, Drew. He's, he's tough to stick with. Two younger brothers, Oliver and Huxley. He plans on going to California Baptist University to study business or film. His accomplishments include principal honor roll all four years, all state based National Honor Society member and DECA state champion. He wants to thank his mom, dad, siblings, and all his coaches and teachers, and all the friends who have supported him. Christian Lack. 6'4", Christian Lack, and if Hannah cannot play a lot of minutes, he's a guy who might see some time. He enjoys working at TJ Maxx, and he wants to 
and his accomplishments include Special Olympics for many years, including skiing, basketball, and soccer. And he's happy to be part of the boys' basketball team this season. Everybody with your endeavors beyond high school. Thanks to Angel and Genevieve for all the hard work they put on on the senior posters and baskets out in the lobby. And a special thank you to Corey Lapp for taking the senior photos and designing the banners along the back wall and team photo by the scoreboard. So you're getting the behind the scenes view today. We're <laughs> behind the action, yeah. but you get the idea. Yeah. Senior night here in Jackson. Pretty exciting, bittersweet for the seniors who will never play basketball on this court again. Postseason play will go to Afton, Star Valley, and then perhaps on to Casper for state. That's pretty wild watching the senior night because you just kind of think back to yours, you know, 20 some years ago. These kids are taking it for granted now, but they'll always yeah. remember uh, this night and, and uh, being able to play in front of your home crowd. Final game. It's pretty crazy. Liam, if you stick to it, hit the books. You too could be a senior one day. I'll, I don't know. <laughs> Is it really worth it, though? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Maybe. Liam, high school, the best five years I, of his life. Let me encourage you, Liam, now to to study hard and don't go into the radio business. Do something lucrative with your life. You're in a good spot to, to learn some lucrative uh, angles that you can take. Yeah, we'll have some fun. We'll reset here. We'll talk about this boys matchup as they get ready to tip. Both teams on the floor taking their warm-ups. You're enjoying Bronx basketball in the home of the Bronx. KZ95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network. In case you haven't heard, Healing Waters is offering a machine Back here as we await the start of Green River Wolves and the Jackson Bronx as the boys set to do battle. And well, unlike the girls, this one totally different for the Jackson Bronx. Although Jackson boys have gotten into a bad habit of losing here. They're trying to snap a five game skit. Green River's on a little bit of a downturn of their own coach coach Lori Ivy in her seventh year has her kids playing three and 14 overall this season 0 and four in quadrant and they've lost their last three including a 70 65 loss to Evanston a couple of nights ago don't let the record fool you though this team when they're shooting can be very dangerous last time they matched up you were asking Jeff it was January 21st, and it was a 76-66 win for Jackson. High scoring game, and 30 of those, well, I want to say, how many points came from uh, Fairbairn and AJ? Both were five from the free. Yeah, so 30 of the points Jackson had came from those two guys hitting triples, AJ Fowler and Mac Fairbairn. Can they do it again? 
Well, I know. I remember earlier, and I mentioned that the, the last game I had seen these guys play was that Riverton shootout on that yeah. Friday night. Unbelievable game, and I hate to think that that was the game that sent them on their skid, but I think it was. Yeah. Uh, losing in heartbreak fashion in overtime in a tightly contested contested game. Um, we're looking to obviously, you know, get back on the right track here. Knock down a few shots early, like we we mentioned with Coach Hatfield, just seeing the rim get bigger and bigger. The longer you let a team hang around, especially on your home floor, the tighter that rim is going to get and make it a little tougher down the stretch, especially as you get into the second half. Um, the goal is to get a nice lead here, um, add to it, play seniors, get them, get them, send them off on a nice note. You don't want to lose your last game on the on your home court. Yeah, and I, you know, I've maintained last season and most of this season that the biggest stumbling block for the Jackson Bronx isn't their talent. They finally have a deep bench. Yep. They got some guys who can really hurt you. They're tough to match up against. It's all in their head now. It's all a confidence issue. And, and, and I think it's never more evident than in the shooting. This team does not shoot very well. 41% from the floor is 13 out of 16 teams ranked. The, from beyond the arc, 28%. That's down near the bottom. They just don't hit shots consistently, and especially in second halves. Sure. That's when games get tight. That's when uh, pressure comes, and that's when it, you know, see a team that starts to shrink from the spotlight. You mentioned that Riverton game. You've been around the game a long time. Sure. How much does that do to you emotionally when you're right there with a team all game long, a team that's ranked number two now very yeah, may well totally. take the entire deal and you just come that close and you lose and since then you've lost four more in a row does that what does that do to you emotionally well, that, the, oh. I think the biggest thing is is referring back to that game and then the, the streak that they're on they spent a lot of energy a lot of emotions that game I mean it was yeah. well attended by the fans the heated environment and to, to, to have a game in your hand not only from the first quarter where they jumped out I think 16 to two you just they just let Riverton slowly creep back in and then enough plays down the stretch Riverton made and Jackson didn't that's going to lead you to start to have some self-doubt now you hope that you hope that you you come out in the next day or, or the next week and start to, and get back on track hasn't happened yet um, I think the goal today is just it, it takes one game you talked about shooting percentages and if they start to see the ball go through the rim a little bit yeah. um, you know I've seen them shoot lights out you alluded to it earlier, their last game on the road against Green River where they got right and scored 75 and hit 15 threes or whatever the number was. It was just a matter of, of them just getting hot early and shooting's contagious, just like any sport. You know, your, your buddies go out and, and make something happen and then you do and then you pass yeah. it along. Everybody who comes off the bench shooting with confidence, you, there, there's nothing like playing in your own home gym. Um, that shouldn't be a deterrent at all. So they know the surroundings. They know they need to get one here today and um, you know it's just going to be a fun one to watch. These Jackson Bronx played last night a loss to Star Valley their fifth in a row it was 62-52 the final the big news out of that was Andrew Hanna did not play for the Jackson Bronx he's been battling illness it looks like he's a go tonight uh, you heard coach Hatfield earlier say we'll see how much we can get out of him but yeah. what you need him just for his points leading score leading rebounder leading everything for this team 17 and a half points you take those off the table that's tough sure and well, watching him warm up it, it, he's moving pretty well I've seen him right. knock down a couple shots it's gonna be lungs you know there's you know when you get sick and you miss a game and and trying to get back on and uh, to, you know to the level that you were playing at before you know whether you play 32 minutes or not we're gonna see here shortly Liam I got kind of a footballish type question for you you because we heard Coach Hatfield say, and hopefully we don't give away the game plan, but dealing with Green River means you've got to account for their leading scorer, Teron Archibald, the 6'3 junior. He's insane. He can score from down low. He can just score from uh, from distance. He leads him in reboundings, free throw shooting, three ball shoot, everything. He is tough to handle. The assignment we hear to start the game is going to fall to Drew Griebel who plays football, who plays, I believe, 
cornerback in the secondary. So, no? Linebacker. Linebacker. Okay. Well, he's used to, like, playing defense and having to keep track of somebody and making sure, sure they don't do their thing. Is Can he do it? Is Drew Griebel going to have it in him, the senior? Well, from personal experience, uh, your ability when you're playing football and understanding physicality, it, it does transfer over to the basketball level. And being able to stay on defenders and all that, it does transfer over. But some problems with that would be maybe he gets a little too physical. Too maybe, hit, yeah. yeah. Maybe he starts fouling. Yeah. It's kind of just uh, it's going to be a game time thing. And also, if, if Drew Reeb is going to be on the floor at this at this point in time, he's going to need to score some points to help this offense out. He's going to need to contribute. You can't, you know, it's like hockey. You can't just be out there to be the fighter. You got to do a little some things too. But you know what? I don't mind the fouls. I don't mind if he gets right. physical. Right. Maybe knock Archibald off his game a little bit. You got fouls. To, if you're Griebel, you got nothing to lose. You're not a guy who sees a ton of minutes normally. So get out there and, and let Teron Archibald know that no shots going on contested tonight. Let's let the boys introduce themselves. It's the Young Live player introduction, and we'll do that now. to go here as we get the starting lineups to you. Jackson comes into this game under second year head coach Aiden Hatfield with an overall record at 10 and 8, 3 and 1 in quadrant ranked number 8 middle of the pack and on a 5 game losing streak. Coach Lori Ivey's crew 3 and 14 overall, 0 and 4 in quadrant play. And we'll get the starting lineup beginning with our Green River Wolves, Case and Ivey coach's son out there. He's a streaky kind of guy. When he's knocking threes, he could be tough. He's joined by Caleb Lake. You'll see two Lake brothers this afternoon, I would imagine. Xander Lindsay will get the start as well. Chris Wilson, the 6'1 sophomore, averaging a dozen a game. And Darren Archibald, the guy to watch. You're going to hear him a lot. 
The 6'3 junior leads this team in just about every offensive category. For the Jackson Bronx, they're going to start seniors tonight. What do you think? Probably. Yeah, I would guess so on senior night. Kinda as many looks, as they can. Yeah, yep. exactly. Maybe even the sixth man coming off the bench. Yeah, Mac Fairbairn gets the go. He's a senior. Carson Harlan also a senior, the 5'9 senior. He can get it going. We need him to knock down his first couple shots. Isaac Larson, the lefty. So by virtue of starting all seniors, you go a little bit small here, with the exception of Christian Lack and Drew Griebel. Not to mention maybe a little slower uh, without uh, Brunner bringing the ball up the floor to start yeah, the game. Yeah. And um. Willis Witheride is introduced, but we're, we're out of starters there. You can't all start. Maybe so, they're making an exception and letting yeah. them play six guys. So yeah, we'll see Witherite, Larson, Fairbairn. Larson. Sorry, we'll see Witherite, Fairbairn, Harlem, Griebel, and Tap right here is Christian Lack going up against Theron Archibald. Lack wins it. Jackson basketball to start things out. Jackson and their home whites. Moving left to right, Green River in their road greens. Nice backdoor inside pass to Lack. He tries to put it up, but left it short, out of bounds. Jackson ball, oh, they're gonna say the Wolves touched it last. No, okay, we'll take it. Yeah, gotta knock that down, that first one. Yeah, it was a nice right move by Lack. Here's Griebel with it, top of the key, with a right. Thought about whipping it around to Fairbairn, but does not. Now it's with a right out to Fairbairn. Mack will try a long three, just short. Rebound into the hands of Case and Ivy. Works the far side to Archibald. Darren, Theron Archibald gets it to, gets it to Caleb Lake. Lake back out to Chris Wilson, drives the lane, kick out pass. Ivy, he'll try a three. Good, Case and Ivy has the first points of the contest tonight. Three nothing, Green River. They'll press here, almost four cause a turnaround. One. Now four on one, with a right to Fairbairn. Three from the corner, no good. Rebound Harlan, he'll try a little 12 foot pop shot. That's no good either, and boy, these Bronx, they, are, they go through stretches where nothing will fall for them. With a right, three, rattles in and out. That was halfway yeah, that'll down. Be great. That was, that cylinder just choked it back out. Yeah. My goodness, and when it's not going your way, it really isn't. Well, it kind of all started with the four on one once they broke the press and they settled for a kick out three. I think they just need to You're continue right. to You're right, go right to the attack, rack. Attack it's four on one. one. Yep. I mean, if they're good shots, you can get those shots though at any time. Yeah, it was a wide open shot. That Fairbairn tuck, but still, yeah, meanwhile, Jackson with a ball off a of Green River miss. Harlan, little 12-foot pop shot. That won't go either. And a scramble for the rebound, and it's going to be the Jackson first foul of the game. Jake, if there's one thing I can Boy. kind of speak to, it's on senior nights for teams across the country, and you start a lineup that you're not normally used to starting, it can get chaotic. I yeah. think the big thing for Jackson is to keep it close here, play them even for a few minutes. We're starting to see Seb kind of check in right now. Um, yep. And they won't go with this lineup for a long time. Willis Witherite picks up some loose change. Nice Home pass. run pass to Fairbairn. He gets it to Lack to Witherite, and that won't go either. Just the lid on it. Jackson can't buy one right now. Is yeah, there is some cellophane over the cylinder <laughs> driving the lane. Is Caleb Lake up and in? Green River gets two from Lake, and it's five nothing. And weather the storm is what. Coach Hatfield's crew wants now. Fairbairn, another look at the three. That won't go. He was the guy that was wicked hot last time these two teams met. Christian Lack with a reverse layup, no good. But Tyrion Archibald will draw the foul. That's good news for Jackson. His first team first for Green River into the line is Lack, and we don't have numbers enough for Christian from the strike. He just hasn't been there, I don't think at all. And he's got that one. They're on the board. All right, that'll work. Isaac Larson will check in for Willis Witherite. Seb Brunner waiting to come in as well. Looks like he'll replace Lack as he waits for Christian to finish his second half of this. And 
and he's got it. Up and in. And yeah, we got a 5-2 game. It'll be Drew Griebel who checks out for Brunner. Now looks like a little bit more normal lineup for these guys. We'll see what yep. they can do getting the ball up the floor. Still have not seen Keelan or Hannah, and neither has their warm-up sweats off yet. That's an over and back on Green River. So Jackson ball. Jackson down 5-2 in the early going. Just underway. Minute and a half into this first quarter if you're joining us. Seb Brunner now. His first touch of the ball. As he's watched by Caleb Lake. Lake did a great job on him down in Green River. I mean a smothering job. Seb did not have a happy night. We'll see if Lake has got that same kind of defense in him now. Drive down the Lane. Nice Good shot by Harlan. Little pump fake there. He put his man in the air and put it up and in. He put so much pressure on their defense when you come to a jump stop in the lane. Yes. Everybody has to converge, and he did a nice job of getting his defender off the feet. Knocked down a little five-footer. Good observation. Pass intended for Archibald. Stolen by Larson. Seb Brunner's laying too strong. And the ball will go over to Green River. Seb had a... Wants that one back as yep. he had a nice layup. Couldn't get it to go. And now Andrew Hanna is in for Christian Lack. And we're seeing something a little more like your typical Bronx lineup. Still waiting on Gavin Keelan. Green River ball. They lead by one here in the early going. Case and Ivy hands off to Archibald. He'll try a long three over the top of Larson. That's way off the mark, out of bounds. And Archibald had a slow start last time we saw him, but you're not going to keep him off the board for long. Well, if Jackson's smart, they'll figure out who he's guarding and, and attack him one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. He's picked up that first foul early. Good. Get, yeah. Get a second foul on him. You can really uh, disrupt his momentum. Bronx do a good job breaking the full court pressure there rather easy. Easily. And now Sepp sets up the half-court offense. Larson with it. Fires back to Sepp Brunner. Drives the lane. Lake is again just all over him. Larson drives baseline. He's turned back to Seb. Bounce pass inside to Hannah. To an open Fairbairn. And his pass to Harlan. Almost tipped and stole the Fairbairn. Yeah, got hit. Baseline. Three. Go! And a chance for the rare four-point play here if he makes this. Yeah, great well, ball movement. There's a case of shooters got to just keep shooting. Yep. Fairbairn was 0 for 3, I think, until that. Now he makes one. Yeah, he made it when it mattered most. Woo! All right, you got to keep trying. I love that Hatfield has kept him in. And he makes it a four-point play. You don't see that every no, day. Eight to awesome. five. That'll give Jackson their first lead of the afternoon. Bringing it up is Caleb Lake, the 5'9 senior. Hands off to Archibald. Oh, a lot of room in the lane. Pop shot, good. And that was too good of a look for too good of a player. He makes it 8-7. Harlan back to Brunner over the timeline. Seb on that far side. Archibald looks like he's drawn that assignment for now to watch Brunner. Hannah, nice. Nice spin move in the lane, up and in. And they got nobody who can match nope. up with him. That was Chris Wilson, the 6'1 sophomore on him, but no, not on 6'7", Hannah. Great footwork, too. Just switching his pivot feet with a Bauer dribble. He was able to get open. Caleb Blake hands off to Chris Wilson now. Wilson kicks it out to Ivy, or Lake, rather. Caleb gets triple team there. What's he going to do with it? I think he was looking just to draw yeah. one on Hannah, and he might have. Yep, Carson left his feet. If all he had to do was kind of keep his feet. Yeah, he's going to no get. No man's land on there. Yeah, he was Stuck. not going to get a shot off. He was in all kinds of trouble, and Harlan bailed him out with a foul. 10-7, mm -hmm. Jackson lead to the line is Lake, and he's good with that. He's a 43% free throw shooter. And just like the girls team, Green River, they all shoot well from the stripe. Lake looks at this one. He is their top assist man, by the way. Missed it. Hannah pulls down the board. Jackson Ball with just over three to go in the opening frame. Seb Brunner with it now. Archibald coming out. They're kind of extending their defense. A little bit of a match. Fair up. burn. Yeah, they're two, coming one, two, way zone. out. Yeah. yeah. They're challenging the shots coming way out. And, and it makes sense. They were burned by the triple yep. last time out. Here's Seb Brunner with it. Finds an open Larson. Pump fake now to Harlan. Carson. Nice skip. Cross court to Fairbairn. It's open look. He'll try yeah. it. Good. Mac Fairbairn loves playing the Green River Wolves. 
Because there's just no other explanation. Yeah, great look by Carson to be able to find A, the open man, and B, the hot hand. Case and Ivy gets it to Wilson. He drives baseline. No good. Hand over the board. Hands off to Brunner. Brunner wants to push the pace. He needs some help, though. He'll wait for his troops. Larson, he'll try a three over the top of Archibald. Too strong. Rebound, Case and Ivy. 2-10 to go in the first. Jackson up 13-8. Archibald yeah. hands off. Open look for Leg, but his shot got partially blocked. Saved momentarily, but Fairbairn comes up with a loose ball. Up ahead to Hannah. No, not a good idea. Not against Archibald. He stole it. Up ahead to Wilson. Chris Wilson will settle things down. Archibald now to an open Ivy. Now to Lake. Caleb Lake working on Brunner. Kick out. Wilson thought about it. Won't do it. Now he will over Fairbairn. No good. And there for the rebound is Carson Harley. Green River not quite feeling it from the perimeter yet. There's a nice steal, and Ivy lost it. Carson's Casey. lucky to get that yeah. back right there. Case and Ivy stole it, then it rolled right off his foot, right to mom. And she said, that's not, that's not how I show you. Minute 34 to go. Jackson up five here in the early going. And the Bronx did a good job, as you said, Jeff, weathering that early part where you don't yeah. have your normal five out there. And also the fact that they were hitting anything. Sure. Oh, my goodness. Sure. And that's, that's how the flow of a game like this is going to go, where there's all the extra festivities. He's not a normal night, new lineup. Um, the amount of misses just started to pile up, but they, they broke through it. They knocked down a couple. Four-point play from Fairbairn was huge. Dude, just kind of break, the, that break really, the ice. Yep. That, and then, you know, now it's just a matter of, of continuing to play basketball and build this five-point lead up to 10. And then, you know, then Gavin, you're into the second quarter. Gavin Keelan's out there. He replaced Hannah. Hannah will have limited minutes if he joined us ladies battling something, not feeling quite... 100%. So he sits and we'll get our first look at Gavin Keeley. Caleb Blake with it now. Isaac Larson watching him. Green River ball. Case and Ivy. Ivy inside Archibald. Working that high post. Now he's going to drive on Harlan. He Good thought team. about a shot. Good He'll team. do it. Yeah. He is really slippery. Nice Ooh. save by Gavin Keeley. And he gets help from Isaac Larson who came right to the ball. Isaac, he tries to drive in the lane. Lost the handle, but it's picked up by Larson. Fairbairn thought about a three. Now loses it and it'll be a foul perhaps on Wilson no it's gonna be Jackson I think it was on Fairbairn as he was trying to chase down that loose ball fourth Bronx foul the second on Fairbairn Archibald's gonna sit for a moment for coach Ivy and the Wolves will see Adrian Ruiz in there watch him he's a guy who loves to go right to the rack the 6-1 junior and he'll do it with reckless abandon i mean most of his drives are borderline charge but he, he'll go right to the cylinder nice shot there but it won't go for chris wilson jackson ball it's isaac larson to aj aj hands off to Carson Harlan in the corner, back to A.J. to Gavin Keelan. Keelan pump fake, gets a screen, doesn't make use of it. Now to A.J., he'll try the long three. Rattles in and out, no good. Board by Ruiz. Looks Green good River Bowl. It really did. Everything but in. There's a nice drive in the paint. No good. Xander Lindsay and Coach Lori Ivy jumping around. She can't believe nothing will fall. Don't worry, Coach Ivy. It won't go for us either. Gavin Keelan will try. That's too short. Rebound. Case and Ivy. And at the buzzer launches one. No good. So a bit of a defensive. Can't get shots to go first quarter. Yeah, those first few minutes were just going to be, you know, play it out with a different lineup, as we mentioned. Um, got through it and built a five point lead got the final shot of the half or the quarter which was was always the goal from a coaching standpoint um, so I think it's their ball it's going to be Green River coming out so got to get a defensive stop and go down and, and extend this thing after one it's Jackson 13 Green River 8 coming right back with the second quarter on home of the Bronx Jackson Hole Radio in the S and uh, KZ 95 <laughs> Experience Jackson Hole like a local. Recently renovated, the 49er boast a new lobby, extended continental breakfast, indoor swimming pool, fitness facility, and 12-person outdoor hot tub. Located on Pearl Street, the 49er is just three short blocks from Jackson's greatest bars and restaurants, where you'll find your home away from home. Enjoy your time in Jackson as part of the town square ends, and stay at the 49er Inn and Suites. Live. 
Bronx play-by-play -play coverage of Jackson Bronx sports continues with Jake Nichols on KZ95. Back to the action, Jake Nichols for Jackson All Radio alongside Liam, Jeff, Kimmy K. Green River with the ball, they trail by five, just underway here in the second. Caleb Lake whips one across to Ivy. Now over to Lindsay. Oh, yeah. He got a big right block. There. Gavin Keelan, who I, even though I think Hannah is the leading shot blocker by stats, to my eyes watching all season, Keelan has the impact blocks. He is really got a feel for that down low in the paint and really comes up with some big blocks all season long. Turnover Green River, Jackson Ball up five, trying to add to it. Yeah, he came from the weak side and uh, wasn't even he, his man. He just he yeah. just kind of has a vision to be able to help his buddies when they get beat off and the dribble. That's, the th that's how he does it. You're right. He comes out of nowhere. He just feels that Isaac Larson long three off the front of the iron. No good. Ruiz pulls down the rebound. Caleb Blake brings it up. Neither team really feeling it yet. Case and Ivy kick out. Ruiz pop shot. Good. And it's 13-10, the first points of the afternoon for Adrian Ruiz, the 6'1 junior. He averages two a game, so that should be enough. Enough out of you, Adrian. Seb Brunner with a bounce pass to Keelan. Keelan being watched by Wilson. He'll drive nice the right take. block. Beautiful yep. shot. He hung himself in the air for what seemed like five yeah. seconds yeah. and then put it in. He kept his dribble alive and got into that spot. Caleb Lake gets a nice pick from Wilson, and now it'll be Wilson launching the three. No good. Keelan sky high for the board. That's important because Hannah's sitting. He's not feeling well. Isaac nice Larson pump fake. fake. Now puts it up. No good. Short. And Larson and gets out rebounded by three wolves there. Caleb Lake with it now. Lake, spin move in the lane, kick out. It's going to be Lindsay. Xander uh, thought better of it with AJ Fowler bothering him. Ruiz with it now. Back out top of the key to Caleb Lake, and he'll settle things down. Six minutes to go in the half. Jackson up 15 10, a game that I don't know if we're going to break 40 for either team. The pace, is, the pace is there. They're just not knocking <laughs> the down the shots. The pace is there. You're right. Yeah. Shots just not going. Ruiz, what happened? Three seconds. Oh. He picked up his dribble instead of continuing on with his with his borderline charging mentality, as you mentioned. He yeah. kind of got stuck, and uh, the defense sucked up to all his other four teammates and couldn't get an outlet pass all alone in the lane for That's, three seconds. It's not like Adrian Ruiz. When he gets the ball, he is headed right yeah. for the rack. Yeah, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you have Gavin Keelan over looming you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want to do much if I got Gavin. <laughs> if I'm in his shadow, Hannah's back out there, by the way. Good idea. So is Palmer Wetzel. AJ, wide open three. He'll try it and just misses. Seb Brunner battling for the rebound, and that might have been an over the back by Ruiz. No, they're going to give it to Brunner, who yeah, I'm with you, Seb. I don't know about that. Seb's got that look we've seen from Seb Brunner with palms up skyward saying seems, what? Yeah, it seems like he got that ball at the highest point. It just was out of bounds off his foot. I didn't yeah. see the foul there. Hunter Lake with it now over to Case and Ivy. Deep. Got two lakes in the game. And now it's Nathan Mitchell. Coach Ivy has just about eight, maybe nine players on the bench. That's it. She runs a real thin bench here. Nice move by Xander Lindsay. And he was looking to kick it out. He walked with it. Set runner stole the pass anyway. It wouldn't have mattered as he tried to find Case and Ivy with it, but Brunner saw that coming. It actually worked out for Green River. That would have started the fast break by, mm. by the, them calling the travel, which I thought it was marginal call. Gets Got a whiff, out yeah. of bounds. Got to set their defense. Fowler feeds Hannah inside. Good job by Lindsay to kind of deny Andrew. Andrew thought about it. Lindsay's not near as tall. Again, a kick out. AJ long three. That's off the top and out of bounds off the top of the backboard. Twice Hannah had the ball inside against ball Xander Lindsay, who is six foot. Yeah, Hannah has seven good. inches on him, and both times Hannah said, nah, I don't know, and kicked it back out. I don't know if Anna's, Andrew's feeling fully like himself, or he's just trying to find the open guy. You can see him sucking gas a little bit. Yeah. These, two, these two minute spurts are going to be good for Jackson to get him out there, yeah. but they need to get, I think they got a sub coming in for him now. He's just not, he's just, his lungs aren't there. Caleb Blake hands off to Taryn Archibald. Back of the game for Green River to Ruiz. Now to Lake. Caleb 
Gets a screen from Ruiz. Kick out wide open. Hunter Lake too short. And Gavin Keelan with the board. Keelan had a miserable game nice last pass. night to Hannah. Hannah to AJ to Seb Runner. He'll drive and penetrate. Great oh, pass. a pass that almost surprised Hannah. That was beautiful, almost too beautiful. Andrew wasn't quite ready for it. Baseline drive, Hannah. Up, no good, but he will draw the foul. That's going to be on Ruiz. Now that looked like vintage Hannah driving baseline. Great offense as far as the ball ball movement goes. Good you, you ball saw, movement. You saw Brunner drop two really nice no looks down, you know, down inside. He just yeah. caught him not in the perfect position to score. At least he's kicking it out, not forcing it. Brunner does what he, or sorry, Hannah makes one from the line. He's kryptonite. not the greatest shooter yet. Kryptonite. 16 10. Now, as Hannah extends that Jackson lead to six, and the back end is no good. A little short. Green River ball with 4.04 to go in the half. It's been a low scoring affair here. Neither team really stroking it yet. This is Hunter Lake, the 5'10 sophomore and younger brother of Caleb, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. Caleb with it now. Kick out to Nathan Mitchell. Back to Hunter Lake. Tries the left block. That shot no good. Wetzel was with him every step of the way. Without Isaac pass. Larson, he doesn't have numbers here, and he threw it away. Jackson will get it, though. It went off of Caleb Lake, and that's one of those times where Jackson kind of wanted to push the pace, but you're one on three, and just not a good pass decision. Brunner to Wetzel. Out to Isaac Larson. Larson, far side of that elbow to Fairbairn. He's had a big three. Nice back. Game door. changer. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Isaac Larson got loose. Back door. Jackson, biggest lead of the afternoon, 18 10. Great find by Wetzel. Just at the top of the key. The kid slipped back door. And, yep. uh, and know, that's a guard. Larson, yeah, that's not where he normally sure. is. But Palmer said, he hey, I, I like him. where you're going, man. Yeah. Archibald, nice strong drive here. Denied oh. by Larson. I don't mind if it's a foul. You cannot give Archibald clean looks. And the whole Green River Green River team surrounds Terran and said, good drive, buddy. Way to draw the foul. That was what you were mentioning earlier as far as throwing a lot of bodies at him, a yeah. lot of fouls. Be physical with him. He's not a very big kid. He's very slight for his for his frame. Yeah. So to knock him down on any drives and send him to earn two at the line instead of getting some free layups, that, that's, that was a great foul by 14. He's super slippery. He plays bigger than his 6'3 sure. listed, and he tracks down oh. a loose ball. Yeah. Here he's out of bounds. Yeah. yeah, pointed out by the assistant coach. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody sure in the gym, I think, pointed it out. Hey. Yep. 18-11, Jackson up seven. They have the ball with 3.08 to go in the half. Wetzel inbounds to Brunner. Brunner across the line, finds Fairbairn. That's his spot, too short. Might have got a piece of it as Case and yep. Ivy. That was very short. Uh, yeah. yeah, great hustle. Uh, Mitchell flew out there and, and I think got a piece of it. Was it Mitchell? Yeah, I thought it was Ivy. Green River ball now, just under three. They're trying to hang with this team on senior night, the Wolves are, and get a little revenge for the loss a month ago on their own home court. Caleb Lake spin move on Brunner, but he is not losing Seb. Seb right with him. Long three there, caught, and Kaysen Ivey with his second triple, I believe. Yep. And a foul, Coach Ivey can't believe it. That's gonna be on. Hunter Lake is the number, no, 2 0. Teron Archibald, his second. He's a guy you can't afford to lose if you're Coach Ivy. Wetzel yeah. inbounds at the backcourt to Isaac Larson. Two and a half to go. Jackson up four. Wetzel. Palmer had a pretty good game last night as well. A lot of guys got a chance to shine. That's out of bounds. Green River ball, errant pass. Wetzel and Witherite had big games last night in the absence of Hannah. And that turnover, costly. What do we got for turnovers for Jackson? They've been pretty good with the ball, Liam, but I don't know. Yeah, Not too uh, many. Jackson's got 12 turnovers. Already? Oh, that is a lot. 14. 
Well, both teams so well, that would count for a low scoring game. Yep. Missing shots and turning the ball over. Taryn Archibald with it now for Green River. Finds Chris Wilson in the paint who slips momentarily. Caleb Blake, he's sliding around yeah. as well. Lake bounce pass intended for Ivy and it didn't get there. Stolen away, here comes Seb Brunner. Seb working on Lake and Caleb picks his pocket. Boy, it looked a lot like last month and now Lake coughs it up to Willis Witherite. And both teams being real reckless with the ball now. Larson pump fake, bounce pass into Witherite. Moves his man Ruiz into the lane. Good, Willis Witherite. He backed Ruiz right up to the cylinder and then put it over the top of it. Beautiful job. That's a down low post move right there. Liam, can we get an updated turnover list now after that flurry? Yeah. <laughs> the updated turnover list. It was like five in the course of 15 seconds. <laughs> it was Caleb Lake hands off to Jason Ivan to Teron Archibald. He's like a stick figure, but he is so yep. slippery. Look at that move in the lane. Nice touch. Can't get it to go, though. With a right, pulls down the board. You don't have numbers here. Maybe you do. Nice ball, Larson going to do it himself. No good. Set Brunner with a rebound, and that's in, and Seb will go to the line. Chance for an old-fashioned three here. Yeah, good job. The fact that uh, um, the fact that Larson didn't give the ball up right there let Seb just kind of hang around, and he picked up the miss. He's been around the rim on a lot yeah. of missed shots. He's not a typical guard that just floats back. He crashes the boards and comes up with some of these balls on the offensive glass. Talk about Hannah not feeling himself. Archibald on the other side of things not having his best afternoon. That's his third foul. He'll sit and Seb Brunner makes it a three point play as he strikes, splashes the net from 15 feet away and Jackson up again by nine now. Under a minute to go. Chris Wilson kicks far side baseline drive there in the host of company is Andrew Lindsay and he calls it up to Seb Brunner. Brunner coming the other way. He might wait for things. He will. 40 seconds cross court nice. to Wetzel into Hannah. I don't like that pass. Take the shot Palmer. Hannah not really open. Ruiz drives the rack and that's what that kid does but he can't get the shot to go. And Green River right now can't buy one either. Carson Harlan with it now. Jackson play for a last shot, maybe 20 seconds to go. Keelan. Yeah, smart, Look at smart play by Carson. Hunter Lake is all over. And now Hunter Lake steals it. Good defense, just like Caleb. Hunter going to go himself. Seb took a whack at him, and Hunter missed the shot. 10 seconds. Five. Andrew Hanna with it to Keelan. Keelan pump fake, drives the lane. Euro step up and in. And that's how the quarter will end. It almost looked like steps there, but <laughs> hey, kids, Kelly yeah, Keelan. Yeah, that was a great finish. I thought they were going to get the last shot about two possessions yeah. ago, and they just kept either turning it over or taking a quick, ill-advised shot. Yeah. Like I said, the coaches are just trying to get the last shot of the quarter to eliminate any damage at the other end of the floor. At the half, Jackson enjoys their biggest lead of the afternoon, and look at the Green River score after a half. That's going to be one of their lowest outputs. So with one half of the books, we'll be back with the halftime show. It's Jackson 25, Green River 14. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on the Jackson Hole Radio Network. He runs across, goes to the red part of the section. Uh, he, he throws it, and he caught it, and he throws it again. He dribbles, dribbles around the guy. He shoots, puts it up, and boom, goes it out of the And the white team almost loses the ball, but then they don't. So crisis averted for the white team. Black team has it. The white team is not playing people down like they did before. Oh, it looks like they're, uh, they're lining up to do something. And shoots, and boom goes it out. Oh, he's gonna get more than one shot. Oh, shooting again. And the dynamite does not go boom that time. Play by play is hard. Uh, so is Jackson Hole Real Estate. Get a pro. McPeak Group proudly supporting the Bronx on their march toward a state championship. Back here at Jackson Hole High School Gymnasium at the half. It's the Bronx 25, the Wolves 14. It's kind of a score you would expect to see at the end of one quarter, but this is at the end of a half. It has been tough going. Both teams finding it difficult to knock down shots. By the way, 
the McPeak Group, realtors, brokers, business folks, yes, of course, but they're also longtime locals and friends of yours here in the Valley, and they'll guide you through finding your best Jackson Hole life. McPeak Group, one of our sponsors this afternoon. Let's take a look at the stat sheet, and it's been dismal for the Green River Wolves. Not that much better for Jackson, but... They're enjoying an 11-point lead. Starting with Green River, Liam, what do you see over there? Not a whole lot. Yeah, Green River uh, kind of dis evenly distributing the ball just as much as Jackson. They've got 14 points with Case and Ivy being their leading point scorer. And all across the board, they've had they have 33%. 33% from three, 33% from two, overall 33%. Uh, haven't been to the charity strike that much. They're one for two as Caleb Lake and Theron Archibald is also one for two, which puts them at an even 50% on the day. Both teams having their turnover struggles with uh, Green River having 17, Jackson having 14. Yeah, that sounds like the, the name of the game at this point with a 25 to 14 score. That's 31 turnovers, and it is just back and forth a flurry. It's almost like if you can get a quality shot, um, you're going to win the win the possession at least. Um, it, yeah, missed shots, turnovers. I mean, it's a perfect storm of no offense. Mm -hmm. Th those two things, you, uh, that sometimes they don't coincide. You know, usually you get all right. You're not feeling it. You know, shooting wise, but you're not exactly coughing it up all the time. Sure. This has been both like a Green River for Green River especially just can't take care of the basketball and can't make a shot so well just like Liam mentioned uh, as far as the free throws are concerned very few trips to the line and I think the fouls we got almost to the bonus there's just no activity driving to the hoop and when there is um, both teams interior you know defense are, are playing well and not playing hard without fouling Liam, what's it look like in the Bronx side of things? It looks like they're getting scoring from all over the place. I'm happy with that. Yeah, Mac Fairburn leads them, but he only kind of leads them because he's been taking a lot of threes. Yeah. He has shoot, shot seven threes, only made two, and then, of course, he had that four-point play earlier. Shooters got to shoot. Yep. I don't mind him. Keep trying. You know, they'll fall. Uh, Gavin Keelan has four, yeah? Yeah. Four, he's got two inside okay. inside the paint. He missed the three earlier. But also Gavin Keelan, he leads the rebounds, but that could also be in part that Andrew Hanna is getting limited minutes due to his True. sickness. True, and I'm glad to see Gavin having a better – not that he had a horrible game last night. He just had the thankless task of playing against a very tall team. Croy Jenkins, uh, that other kid, uh, Taft McClure. Like, that's a big team Star Valley has. Mm -hmm. And without Hannah, if it all falls to you, that's difficult. And he had three fouls in the first quarter. Like, he just sat a whole bunch. It was He never got in a rhythm. So I'm glad to see Gavin Keelan doing better tonight. Andrew Hannah, as we said, is battling an ill. He's kind of 50-50. He'll be out there a little bit. He's got three. Seb's got three. Yep. Um, Larson, Harlan, and Witherite all with a couple of pieces. I love spreading the scoring around, though. That works for me. Uh, yeah. We did not get a chance to talk about keys to the game, but so far, um, it looks like they're achieving at least two of those. One is uh, step one momentum. You can't break a five-game losing streak until you win one. Yep. One at a time, all right? Totally. Uh, you can't bring momentum to the postseason until you win one. The first step is tonight. Snap that five-game skid and begin the momentum towards the postseason. That was my top thing. Also, limit number 20. They're in Archibald, they've done a good job of that. Archibald's been really a non-issue. Yeah, great job on him. As fast, you know, you can attribute it to his foul trouble a little bit. He didn't yeah. really come out until he got his second foul. Coach brings him out. I remember it about a minute and a half, his second foul. Thought he would be done for the half. They send him back out for an offensive possession. In transition, he ends up picking up another foul with getting in there, I think, on one of Seb's drives. Just a little reach in puts him to three. And I know Coach Ivy did not want that third foul before halftime. Yeah, and he's not the only guy over there, to be fair. It's not all on him, but sure. he, he is their, their big guy. He's their leading scorer by far. Double anyone else's production. Leads them in every offensive category. So, you know, it falls on you, kid. He's only a six uh, junior, uh, but if he's not... 
not going. Green River is not going. And so far, so good if you're the Bronx, limiting the damage Archibald's done. And then finally, our third key to the game was stay loose. And we say that because this is a Bronx team that has not shot well all season. And especially of late, they have been stone cold uh, a little bit better. You see some glimpses of being better. But you shoot so much better when you're loose, Jeff. Sure, uh, sure. You don't want to. At you, home. you get tight. Yep. Yeah. Totally. And then it's must. We talked about the rim getting smaller and, and shrinking in a close yeah. game. Luckily, they're at an 11-point lead coming out in the second half. They know they had they missed quite a few opportunities down the stretch to grow that lead. But it's much better to shoot with a 10-point lead than a 10-point deficit, for sure. We'll come right back with the start of the second half. Once again, it's the Jackson Bronx 25, the Green River Bulls 14. Jackson with that 11-point bulge in a game that, boy, this might be a real low score. You think yeah. halftime adjustments? I mean, what's going to happen at the half? Well, I mean, I 14 know Coach, points isn't going to yeah, cut it. Yeah, I know Coach um, Coach Ivy was probably just um, stressing that they're there, they're right there as well as as well as Jackson has played for spurts. Yeah, um, they just haven't knocked down shots. You know? For Coach Hatfield, he's got to tell the boy, hey, look, not our best game on senior night, but Very. you got an 11-point lead. Mm -hmm. Stick with it. Yeah, fortunate to be up 11. Uh, some of his key guys haven't played all the minutes that they've um, normally been accustomed to, and I think he's just going to want them to continue to attack the rim because there is a size advantage, um, and, you know, that's going to open up the outside. It shouldn't be outside in. they got to get in the lane, um, get to a, a jump stop in there and knock down some of these 5'8 footers grow the lead and then and then you're then you're off to the races Jackson needs this one desperately but so too to the Green River Wolves both teams would love to snap a slide right now we'll be back with the start of the second half right after these you're enjoying Bronx basketball and KZ 95 of the Jackson Hole Radio Network hey I'm Allie Lane from Jackson Hole Young Life do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. Young Life, Jackson Hole, Young Life, all about adventure, friendship, connection, and a sense of significance. Thanks for helping sponsor Bronx Basketball, Young Life. Big shout out to the uh, wrestling team. Jackson Bronx sending eight kids to the state competition at Casper. Ty McBride, Hunter Boss, Logan Ward, Aiden Graylin, Brennan McGowan. Caden Neal and Tristan Sasser all wrestle for Jackson. We're back to the action. Quick turnover by Jackson. It looks like they got uh -oh. the normal starting lineup that they've been accustomed to. Uh, just tried to force a pass inside. It got broken up, and here we are going the other way. Give up a layup and an and one. Kind of a nightmare start on the first 20 seconds. Yeah, that's not the way. And Boy, this is a Bronx team that's come out of the half so many times and put together a third quarter that looks like a train wreck. Uh-oh. I was just going to say, best case is they grow the lead, put this game on ice going into the fourth, or opposite of that, you let a team with a little bit of confidence kind of sneak back in. Yeah, you got to put, put your heel down. Gavin Keel with a nice drive down the lane, but he missed the layup. And... Who gets that ball? It's out of bounds. Yeah, luckily uh, Jackson Hannah ball. knocked it loose and it went right off the top of a Green River head. All straight right. out of bounds. Right. We got uh, Wetzel, Brunner, Larson, Keelan, and Hannah out there. Hannah with it now. Hannah gets a screen from Brunner and goes right to the cylinder. Up That's and in. Gotta do right yeah, there. a little mismatch over the top of Chris Wilson. That was one of the rare times you'll see Brunner screening for Hannah. Yeah, yeah, good point. It's kind of a set play. 
scramble for a loose ball here. It goes right in the hands of Isaac Larson, who takes it away from Theron Archibald. Larson, look out behind you, and he spins away from Lake, gets it to Palmer Wetzel. Wetzel with Lake on him. Boy, Caleb Lake, so handsy. Pesky. He's difficult. Pesky. Good word. Yeah. And now Lucille. Green River, it's Caleb Lake with it behind the back to Archibald. That was pretty, yeah. but Archibald could not finish. And here comes Larson the other way. Pace picked up here as we start the third. Gavin Keelan to Brunner on the far side, and that's Case and Ivy on him. Over to Keelan. Keelan over the top of Archibald. His three is too short. Backdoor rebound, Isy. Case and Ivy up to Caleb Lake. He tries Wetzel. He got out of control and then just threw a pass. Wetzel blocked it. Brunner took it. That's, Step with it now. That's what happens when you get caught up in the air. Yeah, you, oh, now another cough up, and it's going to go right to Chris Wilson. Coast to coast, up and in. And it's 27-19 now. I can't keep up with all the turnovers. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't, I'm a statistician's nightmare. I know, Liam. I can't imagine. That is the biggest thing right now. you got to click on, not scoring. Turnovers. Click, click, click. They are adding up. Keel it to Brunner. Shep Brunner tries to put a shake and bake on Ivy. Can't get loose of him. Now corner, Wetzel, wide open three, too short. Larson with a nice rebound. Said nobody near him, and he splashes it. Oh, boy. They needed Seth that. Brunner. They did. That was at a key time. Jackson puts that lead back to 11. That's been their biggest bulge this afternoon. Caleb Lake with it to Darren Archibald. Their leading score has just not been feeling it. Here he goes, and it's too short. But he'll draw the foul from Larson. Boy, not a lot of contact there. No, I think it was on uh, him fighting through the screen. Uh, the shooter was was wide open. He got his shot, but they called him fighting through the screen. Right, not in the act of shooting. Yeah. You're right. Second team foul on Jackson Green River has not committed one yet in this half. Bounce pass inbounds to Wilson. Chris Wilson puts it up. No good. Lindsay with a put back. That won't go either. Two misses. And a nice board there by Christian Lack, who sets a screen for Wetzel. Back to Lack, the give and go. Christian's ah, uh, got a little bit of weight out in yeah, front of him, and he drug, tipped over. Drug the pivot foot yeah. just there. Yeah, nice. that's a tough one. That's a nice idea. Those two yeah. guys working together, both off the bench, Lack and Wetzel. I like the way they work together there. Mm -hmm. Here's Archibald. Teron Archibald with Wetzel switch. way out here to meet him. He takes use of a screen from Lindsay. Now Great gives pass. it back to Lindsay, but his shot no good. Good defense down low by Christian Lack. Out of bounds off of Lack. The 6'4 senior. Great little two-man game, you know, by the uh, um, Archibald. Great feed. Should Archibald have been a and Lindsay, yeah, working well together. Here's the inbounds from Lindsay. Gets away from Wilson and Brunner with the steal. Seb brings it up across the line. I like the way Wetzel and Lack are working here off the bench, really giving Jackson some good minutes as they enjoy an 11 point lead. Here's Palmer Wetzel with it now. Lack sets the screen. Nice. Now back. We've seen that three times now Ooh. in the last minute. This shot won't go, but that's, that's a give and go. Set the screen, get the pass back and then finish oh the finish hasn't been there but right. lack will go to the line yeah that bounced up on the edge of the rim three times and just missed a three-point off play opportunity twice jackson has done that both times down here and green river did it as well mm -hmm. with lindsay and yeah, both coaches are probably starting Archibald. to see, see yeah. a little bit of uh, a matchup opportunities and getting into this two-man game. He's picking rolls. Yeah. Not was, running a whole lot of motion. I was just about to say that uh, Lack made his two free throws earlier. He did, yeah. And he said we don't even have numbers on him from the line, and he's looked pretty good. Three he's got four. a nice stroke. He makes it 31-19, Jackson. Long deep. three from Ivy, deep from downtown. No good, and Lack goes airborne for the rebound. Maybe a little bit of a heat check there from his previous couple threes that he's knocked down. Set brother with it now, looking for Lack, but guess who got a hand on that? Caleb Lake, who leads his team in assists, and I got to think he's and the deflections. leading stealer. Yeah. <laughs> Guy is just everywhere you don't want to be another if you're in the one. Bronx. Yeah, another one. Is he takes it out of 
Lax hands momentarily. Wetzel, good ball movement here from Jackson, but it's all perimeter stuff. Yeah, a little hot potato. Seb Brunner with it now, drive, trying to create good something. Attack. Penetration up and in, Seb Brunner. He weaved his way through three different Wolves defenders. Seb does that, and then he'll kick out a lot. I love him just going with a shot there. Exactly. Do it. Take control of the game, and it's 33-19 now, Jackson. Caleb Lake with it. Far side elbow to Wilson. Wilson, top of the key to Lindsay. Xander Lindsay to Ivy. Kaysen finds an open. Wilson drives baseline, picks up the Good double hands. team, kicks it out. Ruiz can't handle it. And a jump ball, maybe, as Larson is tied up with Ruiz. Should be. Boy, if that's not a jump, it's a street yeah. fight. Yeah, and it's, it should stay here with Green River Ball. But yeah, you just want you want your guy to hit the floor. These guys are bending over at the waist trying to secure yeah, these loose yeah. balls. Yeah, yeah, get down and go. Yeah, yeah I mean, good point. But good it was point. tied up and... and uh, Nice move there by Caleb Blake, who was suspended in the air for a while. His shot, though, does not go. And again, Green River really has trouble putting the ball in the basket. Just a little undersized Larson. in there. Larson to Brunner. He's got an open lane. Kick out. AJ, his three is tipped. And that's Caleb Blake again. Came out of nowhere to deflect that shot. Would have liked to have seen him throw one little up fake because you could see the defender yeah. running from a long distance. Yeah. He would have been standing a by himself. A pump fake there. Yep. Caleb Blake is over there in the equipment room. Uh, up against the wall. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Instead, AJ. he gets a block shot. Around the horn they go. Seth Brunner trying to move on Caleb Blake. That's not easy. Easy kick out AJ. AJ working on the other lake brother Hunter. Inside pass to Christian. He's got a post up here. Go to the hole. He doesn't. He was looking to pass. If he just spun to his right, he had an open look at the basket, but he does draw the foul on Ruiz. That's his second. Team second. Both teams now with two fouls. Fouls have not really been an issue. Other than Archibald's got yep, three. Exactly. Brunner wants to float one out here to Keelan. Does so. Keelan back to Sepp. Sepp Brunner drives, splits a double team, and now kicks it out to Larson. Long three open. Off the back of the good. iron. No good. Rebound. Fight for it. AJ can't come up with it. Hunter Lake with it. Up ahead to Caleb Lake. Beautiful pass to Ruiz. He got whacked. No call. And he missed the shot. AJ with it now in the corner. Inside okay. of Christian Lack. And a whistle, that's going to be Ruiz, picks up his second in a hurry here, or his third, rather. And Coach Ivy's going to go get him. And she'll send in Nathan Mitchell. Yeah, Lack is just having his way inside. He's just cutting and getting in I front like, of a man, yeah, and they, they're finding him. I've liked Christian's game all season long. I wish we'd see more of him. <laughs> Kayla with it now on the near elbow. Top of the key to Larson. He said, ooh, penetrate a little bit. Now AJ's wide open. He'll try it. Yeah. Jay Fowler. He's got a triple. nice little first flick. triple. Liam says. Yeah, he's got a nice little, nice little flick of the wrist from from yeah. distance. Yeah, I mean, last season he was deadly from beyond the arc. This year he's really struggled. There's spin move in the lane by Wilson. That shot won't go, and Coach Ivy's kids just still continue here in the third, struggling with hitting shots. Keelan nice. back to Brunner, wide open. Good job by Keelan to recognize yep. that. Just gave it right back sure. to Brunner. He says, you're open. Yep. But Seb could not make it. Caleb, no look pass. Ivy, long three, too short. Rebound goes right back to Case and Ivy, and he'll settle things down. We got a minute 15 to go. Pace has been there, as you pointed out, Jeff, just not the points. No, they're, and they're getting to the rim, both teams. You know, they're just yeah. not adding up in, in, in buckets. Chris Wilson with it down for the Wolves. Drives on AJ. Boy, looked like he took steps. Gives it to Mitchell. Hands off to Ivy. His pass wanted Lake. It did get there the hard way. <laughs> Caleb Lake's shot won't go. Mitchell tracks down the loose ball, but he gives it right to Isaac Larson. One on two, up and in. Oh, oh my goodness, Christian Lack was there for the rebound and somebody checked these baskets. I don't think they're regulation <laughs> yeah. size. Yeah, it looks like someone they came out be. welded welded lids on them at halftime as well. I, I'm not sure these holes are regulation. What are they supposed to be, Jeff? Uh, you know, I'm not sure of the diameter, but I know both there should it's be supposed two, to be bigger two, than the basketball, two, right? Two, two basketballs, <laughs> two regulation basketballs can fit in. Is that right? Uh, into a rim. Yep, oh, you wouldn't know it today. No. 
not even one is fitting in, you know, down the stretch. There. My goodness, I I was ready to call that oh, shot good. Isaac yeah. Larson, oh, yeah. one on two, put a beautiful left hand uh, layup yeah. in, and it just sat there mm -hmm. and sat there and sat there. There, but then you got Lack cleaning up. Christian Lack, what is he from the Lamb? He's only missed one in six tries. That one doesn't go though. I just jinxed him. Well, the, yeah, the that was two in six tries. Okay, four for six. All right. 35 seconds to go. This is Mitchell, baseline three, well short, backdoor rebound. Chris Wilson averages 12 a game, does the sophomore, and he was right there. Perfect Johnny on the spot right for the backdoor. Right, right time. Board and bucket, yeah, A.J. with it now, playing for a last shot maybe, down to 17 seconds. Carson Harlan directing traffic, gets a screen from Lack, can't make use Great of it, but pass. there's that give and go again. But Christian cannot finish. Archibald with it now for Green River. Three seconds, Archibald hits the deck, and the closest guy to him is Isaac Larson, and he knows it. He'll draw the block. And with four seconds, you send their best free throw. Well, they're going to say he wasn't shooting. No, nope. looks like on the floor. Yeah. God, you wish that you wish that ball just lay. He had a great look. Carson put a perfect pass in his hand. Mm. Inbounds to Archibald, hands off to Lake. Last second buzzer beater is good. Of course, that one goes. Caleb Lake. His first two on the day. Is that right? Yeah. Like he's, I mean, his defense and his assists are his game. But, yeah, he's going to need to put in points because Archibald just doesn't have them. And that's the way the third quarter will end. Jackson 37, Green River 23. Be right back with the exciting finish on Jackson Hole Radio Network. From Jackson Hole Young Life. Do you remember what it's like to be a teenager? It can be really tough trying to navigate sports, academics, relationships with family and friends, not to mention the added stress of social media, phones, and screen time. Young Life believes that every teen deserves to know that they are loved and their story matters. Young Life leaders enter the world of teens, focusing on what matters to them, fun, adventure, friendship, and a sense of significance. If you love teenagers as much as we do, there's more info at our website, jacksonhole.younglife.org, to learn more. This is KZ95 with live coverage. Bit of an ugly basketball Bronx. game, but there's been enough highlights for the Bronx that they lead. They have the ball just starting, just underway here in the fourth. Shot there, won't go, what's well, new? And the rebound, Green River. The Wolves bring it up court. It's Caleb Blake works it to, oh, nice pass by Mitchell, but again, a little bit sloppy. Seen a lot of turnovers and a lot of missed shots this afternoon, and that's why we're at nice strong move by Keelan, but it won't go, 37-23. Now that shot from Owen Kana seeing his first action is too strong and Green River ball. That's going to be a foul also. Um, Gavin Keeler. Yeah, I got a little aggressive on that rebound. Um, get, uh, fouls have really been an issue. Both teams with four apiece here in the second half. Hunter Lake with it now. Hands off to Terran Archibald. Archibald with Brunner on him. Gives it back to Hunter Lake. Lake, he'll post up, fire, step back three. That's no good. Keelan with a rebound. Up to Seb Brunner. Have not seen much of Hannah. He's nursing an illness. Bounce pass by Brunner. It's kicked unintentionally. Still, you can't do that. Possession will stay with Jackson. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what Seb saw there for that bounce pass. But, anyway, Jackson will... Retain well, possession. He had, he had Hannah just slipping, and it was it was going to be a mm. dunk had he completed it. Just threw it off the defender's foot right there. No, no look. Black hole starting to fill in over there. Looking good on a Saturday. He's Hannah with it now. Gives it to Owen Kana. Pump fake. Kana works it to Seb Brunner. Floats one into Hannah, but that not a good idea. Archibald right there. Those passes forcing it to Hannah has been real problems all season long. Pump fake there, Caleb Lake now kick out. Ivy baseline three off the top of the basket. Going the other way with it is Kana. His shot is blocked. No foul. Clean block by Chris Wilson. Archibald's three, that won't fall. It's Seb Brunner with a rebound to the backside. Back and forth we go. And again, these baskets are too small. <laughs> Keelan in the lane to Hannah, and that's up go. and in. Andrew Hannah finally. 
It's 39-23, and this one has been hard to watch at yeah. times, but there's Caleb Lake with it now. Up and over the top of Connor. No good. Gavin Keelan to Brunner. Brunner brings it across the line. Six minutes even to go in regulation. Working on Archibald. Brunner pulls up. Keelan with a wide open three. Good! Gavin Keelan with his signature line drive three. His balls aren't in the air very long. No, no. But if it goes in, coaches are just excited yeah. to see the three points go up on the Hannah's court. overheated. He's pulled his jersey up to try to give his body some air. He is his spurts feeling hot. Been, his spurts have been short but sweet, I think. You know? Andrew, don't breathe on anybody while you're in there, please. You can't have the rest of the team going down. What's going around school, Liam? Something probably, right? The crowd. Uh, I think we're just uh, done with school. Things pretty over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Liam. It's uh, mid-February. Yeah, yeah, you got a long way to go, months, kid. Bud. Yeah. I want to go back to middle school. This isn't fun anymore. Forty-two, twenty-three. Jackson lead in a game where they're taking advantage of a Green River uh, team that just got off the bus, not feeling anything as far as shooting. Five forty-five to go into regulation. Green River with the ball. It's Caleb Lake works it. Archibald gets it right back. Drives the right block up, and that's just an indication of how it's yep. gone for the Wolves. Lake just laid it right up, and it rolled off the rim. Yeah, Lake's, Unreal. Lake's five for one from two today, and with that turnover, they now tie their first half. Uh, total. total. Oh, there's Christian Lack, strong power move in the lane, but he's got bothered there by Archibald and thought better of it. Seb Brunner, Jackson in no hurry here to shoot as Coach Hatfield barks instructions from in front of the bench. They got the lead, no reason to force it here. Seb Brunner drives baseline off his own foot as Archibald came over to shut him off, left him with no real estate over there. And Seb's uh, kind of, Seb. I think he's wishing the ref would have saw it off the Green River yes. player. He, he's in disbelief right now that it was called off of his foot. Seb has perfected that look. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it's me look. Yeah. Archibald gives it to Chris Wilson. Pump fake, drives right block. No good. Keelan with good Great defense. Rebound. And a nice board by Christian Lack. But Keelan would not give Lake a clean look. And then Lack was there to pick up the garbage. And it's Seb Brunner with it now. Now, Brunner to Carson Harland. Got Archibald on him. Keelan, pump fake. Hunter Lake didn't go for it. Top of the key to Brunner. Brunner tries Good the lane. Screen. Got a nice screen from uh -huh. Lack at his back door. Offside layup won't go, but he'll draw the foul. Seb is so good at that. He'd rather go opposite side. What do you call that when you're right-handed and you go left uh, just kind layup? Of a just kind of a reverse, reverse layup. Yeah. Like that's just right hand on the left side or he left loves hand on the doing right that. side. Yeah. And he'll do it with the right hand. He Once in a while, I've seen him use, le use the left, but... He's well, perfected it. Yeah, usually guards that get into the lane, you know, they have to be kind of crafty. They're not, he's not really amongst the tall trees today. Yeah. Um, but the creativity around the rim for some of these guards starts when you're very little, and he just probably got, yeah. um, you he's know, he's got you a great feel yeah. for if, yeah, do I have an arm or hand up in my sure. way? He feels sure. it really good. He makes the first, but not the back end. Rebound Ruiz gets it to Caleb Lake, Green River ball. Now driving is Case and Ivy. His 10-foot runner in the lane will go, and that's Green River's first points in a decade. They were stuck on 23 for a while. 43-25. Jackson leads this on senior night. Seb Brunner with another pick from Lack. Drives the right block. Pop shot. No. Rolls away right into the hands of Ruiz. Good Ruiz. Hustle. Yeah, Brunner all over him, and it's stolen away by Lack, but they're going to call... Oh. A foul on someone. Well, I think they're trying to decide on if it was a travel. Yeah. Which, Rolling but, around man, on the floor. I and don't know how you call that. My. Great hustle play by both by both Lack and Good and, job and letting Seb. them play by the refs, but yeah, I was a little quick to call that travel when you roll around on the ground obviously that's that's a travel sure. and Ooh, oh nice steal Larson. Isaac Larson he'll pick up the loose change and he gets the pumped by Ivy yep Case and Ivy a frustrated foul there as he put a shoulder into Larson 
It's been that kind of afternoon for the Wolves, and he's upset that he coughed that up in the first place. Still, it's just the, well, six fouls now on the Wolves, four yeah. on the Bronx. And a good foul because he got him on the floor before the layup, so True. it's all out of bounds, not yep. free throws. Get him early, Seth Brunner gets another nice screen from Christian Lack and drains it. The 18-footer is through. And it's a biggest lead of the afternoon for Jackson, 20 point bulge. Caleb Lake with it now, with a right ready to check into the scorer's table. Lake, he's in trouble here, needs help. He gets it out to Archibald. Taryn Archibald working on Harlan. They let him play, a lot of bumping going on there. Caleb Lake, Caleb, he drives the block, kick out. Ruiz follows him in and Christian Lack gets whistled. Boy, I didn't see, nope. he just took yeah. it from him yeah. cleanly. And yeah, a the out, unless we didn't see him on his wrist, you know, from this Perhaps. far away, but. With a right will check in for Seth Brunner. He gets a much needed break. Yeah, the refs uh, dishing out a lot of fouls today. Six for Green River, five for Jackson. Turnaround jumper Ruiz, and that might have been a real foul there by Lack, and he does pat his own chest and say, all right, I earned that one. Yeah, it's tough when you're a defender and you see the guy rise with the ball right in front of you, you just want to smack it, and uh, <laughs> yeah. he didn't get all ball. He, you know, if he would have just kept his hand up and made the kid shoot over the top of him, Ruiz, fine. the left-handed 6'1 junior is true with the first one, 44% free throw shooter. See how he does on the back end. It's a good stroke. Yeah, nice backspin, but he's too short with it. Good rebound there by Drew Grebel. And Carson Harlan looking for a pick from Witherite, never could get it. Now hands off to Isaac Larson. Larson, good defense by Mitchell. Yeah. Now joined by Archibald, Witherite with it. You got a wide open Grebel on the baseline, but he, by the time he thought about nice it, too pass. much trouble. Witherite in the lane, that's the right idea. Grebel's put back, that gets blocked. Out of bounds, Green River ball. And again, it's, boy, if you're looking for pretty basketball, you haven't seen a lot of that no. this afternoon. No, but I bet you, I can, I can tell you, Coach is uh, looking up the it. scoreboard and excited to be up 20 with yeah. two and a half to go to end a, uh, a long yeah. losing streak. For real. I mean, any by any means necessary yep. to end the slide, and Jackson will take it. That shot, uh, too late. It's after the whistle. Lack's going to get another one here. I, no. They're going to get Drew Griebel. Playing football, as Liam pointed out, yeah, on the hardwood. To, I used to foul out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, free throw doesn't go though. Rebound with a right. Here comes Jackson Larson with it far side. Isaac slows up. He's got Caleb Lake on him. Oh, Lake just snapping away at him trying to take yeah. that ball. So pesky. With a right. Open look. 15 footer. Too short. Can't get a roll. Rebound and Lack fought with Wilson over it. And they're going to say out of bounds. That's good. Th I thought Lack was going to get whistled for another. They are getting great minutes out of Lack. They just, are. Just to seem that, you know. To let Hannah rest. Yeah. Yeah. Christian Lack's come up big this game. You're right. The good. reddest face on the floor, that's for sure. Good observation. <laughs> Caleb Lake with it now. Far side of Case and Ivy into Mitchell at the pivot. He hands off to Lake. Baseline now, spin move by Wilson, and he pulled, yeah, it was like palming the ball, I thought, but no, wait. Griebel got his third. Foul. That is Griebel. Give him a f helmet and shoulder pads. I like Drew Griebel as the linebacker, though, I'll tell you. He's a good tackler. Chris Wilson and Isaac Larson gets a big hand coming out the senior. And that free That's throw is ball. well short by Wilson. No call by the official. Jackson ball just under two to go. Griebel with it now. Drew hands off to Carson Harlan. Use it. Harlan has got Witherite ready to set a screen yeah. on Ivy, but he doesn't move. Lack with it now. Back to Witherite. Witherite. Far side. Kicks it back out to Carson Harlan in front of the black hole. Student. Section. Nice. nice pass inside to Christian Lack. Up and in, but before the shot, they're not going to count it. Contact from Ruiz as Christian Lack and Adrian Ruiz share a little sorry, sorry, not sorry kind of <laughs> handshake. And Lack will go to the line. He's been money. Both teams in the bonus now. 
Good point, Liam. Lack first is in. Five for seven. I love the play, though, the way we, we we yelled at Carson to use the screen. He turned it down. He came out to, and reset something, got the matchup he wanted, and made a great feed to Lack. Good patience, you're yeah, right. Very good patience, and there's no rush. Lack makes them both. I think he's had all his points this afternoon from the line. 47-26. <laughs> Ivy hands off to... Ruiz now to Lake. Caleb Lake, he's been in most of the way for Green River. He's their dish man, and now he costs one up there. He got banged in the head, no call. Nice. Grebo hands off the wither right to Lack. Unselfish play right there. Great ball movement. With that Green River turnover, that is their fifth total, 50th total turnover in the game. Whoa, that's not like them. Long three there is good from Nathan Mitchell. And again, uh, not many points this fourth quarter for Green River. 50 seconds under 50, 45 to go in regulation. Jackson running away with this one at home and will finally snap a five-game losing streak. Bounce pass into Griebel, puts a move on Mitchell. Nowhere, or Wilson rather, and now he coughs it up. Steal, here comes Green River. Up ahead to Caleb Lake, wide open, but he won't take the shot, and he should have. He was trying to be unselfish, get it to Ruiz, but it's stolen away by Lack. Griebel's three, that's off the mark. With a right with a rebound, Drew Griebel in the lane. Oh, no good. Fought for the rebound with Lack, and now loses the ball. Caleb Lake getting real scrambly here. Lake working on Larson, or working on Harlan, no good. Case and Ivy with a long three, no. And the rebound, Carson Harlan, just they'll just dribble, dribble it, it out. out. Yeah, good win. Yeah, wow. Wow, well, big, big win for the Jackson Bronx. 49-29, and well, it's a team sometimes you just can't figure out what kind of game you're going to get out of Jackson, but they needed this. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, the old saying, uh, a win is a win is a win. <laughs> uh, as ugly as it was, like I said, coach is just looking to get in the win column. They had a team that they could beat coming in tonight, senior night, and they did the job. Um, as uh, as ugly as it was, they did it with a uh, did it and then some. We'll be right back to wrap things up with Liam's statistics after this. You're enjoying Bronx basketball on KZ95 and the Jackson Hole Radio Network. Experience Jackson Hole like a local while staying at the Antler Inn, Elk Country Inn, Cowboy Village Resort, or 49er Inn and Suites. With the best entertainment, dining, shopping, bars, and brews all in walking distance, you'll never want to leave. Call 1-800-4-TETONS or find them on the web at townsquareins.com. You're watching and listening to live coverage of Jackson Hole High School Sports on KZ95. Back here to the action to wrap things up one last time. And Liam, we're going to look at the score sheet and start with our Green River friends. Not a lot to crow about if you're Green River. The biggest number over there is turnovers. That's yeah. embarrassing for Coach Ivy. But who led him in points? All right, so who led him in points was Case and Ivy. He was one he was two, and one for two and two for three from the three. Did not shoot any three throws, had one rebound, and he led them with eight points. But they also spread the ball decently well the next highest score would be uh, Chris Wilson and they had like they had seven over on the board with Jackson spread the ball much better yeah they they didn't get the game they wanted out of Tyron Archibald maybe I talked him up too much uh, but they didn't get a game out of anybody really that's not the normal Green River uh, shooting they, they were just dreadful how about uh, for Jackson I, what I got from your sheet is Seb Brunner led the way with 11 but again yep. really spread out the production yep well, yeah, they spread it out very well. Seb Brunner led them with all of them, but you, they kind of just, like, spread it out and still had a lot of points, you know? Like, each, everyone had their separate amount of points, even if it's small, but they just, they, whenever they spread the ball, they win a lot. Yeah, that, yeah. good point. I don't like them when they get two-dimensional, and it's Seb and Andrew, and that's it. I like when I see stuff like this. Seb Brunner with 11, Mac Fairburn, Gavin Keelan, and Andrew Hanna all can Contributed seven, a touchdown apiece for them. And A.J. Fowler hit the one three. And uh, Isaac Larson, Carson Harlan, and Willis Witherite chipped in with two apiece. That's getting production from everybody, and that's really cool. Balance. Coaches always talk about yeah, balance 100%. scoring, right? Um, I was most impressed with uh, he didn't show up 
on the stat sheet a ton, but when Keelan was out there, he just seemed to be that calming presence, both defensively, offensively, hit a three and got was able to get to the rim. He just was an erase, uh, um, yeah. a mistake eraser when his buddies got beat. He was just a contesting shots, knocking shots out of bounds. He just, he, for me, he was one of the, besides lack, man, those two guys, they needed to show up to be the inside presence, and they did tonight. That and was fantastic Gavin to watch. really needed that after last night where he just never got in a rhythm. All right, who's your favorite guy you like on the Bronx? All right, uh, it's a tough decision, but Gavin Keelan did lead them in rebounds, but I'm going to give it to Christian Lack. Just yeah. his ability to continue contributing at the charity strike, but also something unrelated to this you know, MVP talk is Although the seniors are leaving, like the upcoming class is a lot. You got Palmer Wetzel already playing varsity as yeah. a sophomore, and this freshman class they didn't tend to lose games. Uh, to freshman myself, a lot of these are buddies. You got Darren, Will, Will Geitman, and Connor Scott all playing JV. Uh, McKinney at the guard, and the, the list just goes on and on. They're very talented. Yeah, future looks bright. You got a lot of kids coming up, but uh, yeah, I think we all agree it was a senior tonight that impressed us. What a way to go out, Christian. Lack. Yep. Haven't seen a lot of him this season, but what we saw tonight was big minutes. I love it. Yep. Excited to see what he does in the next games and into the playoff run. This could be a big boost for him. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Christian, you the man tonight. So uh, with this win, Jackson improves to 11 and 8, snapping a five game slide. Green River uh, falls to 3 and 15 overall. Big conference win. Jackson not likely to better their position in the quadrant be, uh, uh, because of the loss to start. Valley last night, but we'll see. Uh, stranger things have happened. The Braves could fumble down the stretch. They play Evanston uh, tonight, um, and then we finish with Evanston next weekend uh, for the final game of the year. Hey, guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you for you having awesome. me. Yep. Hey, it was Lee fun. Jeff, much appreciated. You got it. That'll wrap things up from us for Jackson Hole High School Gymnasium. We'll close it out, and a big thank you to Young Life Jackson Hole. Jackson Lumber, McPeak Group, and the Town Square Inns of Jackson Hall. Fun basketball and a big win for the boys. Girls, and not so much. Final score in the boys game, Jackson 49, Green River 29. That'll do it from us till we'll see you again down the road. For Jackson Hall Radio, I'm Jake Nichols alongside Liam, Jeff, Kimmy, wishing you and yours good afternoon from Jackson.